Welcome to the Rubin Report. I am not Dave Rubin. I am Michael Knowles, but we are here because, you know, Dave has been away now for an entire month. He's been in bliss. He's been in paradise, <laughs> away from all the misery, and we are going to spoil all of that for them. This is the Rubin Report. <laughs> Welcome back. Knowles, I have literally no idea what's going on in the world. We have sat here for a few minutes, talked about life. Yes, but not news. You did not reveal anything. No. I truly know nothing. Like, I absolutely nothing. I and knew. People don't believe it, but it's true. When you asked me to host your coming back show. Yeah. I knew, oh, there'd be a lot of fun. We've seen it in years past. Ben has done it. Glenn has done it. Oh, you know, and it's, there's always some crazy news. You have no idea. This year, you know, they always say this is the most important election yeah. in our lifetimes. <laughs> this is the craziest year of news in my entire lifetime. And you thought things, you thought things were bad in July, probably, right? Well, everyone thought things were bad yeah. in July. Oh, and yeah. I can tell you this. So first off, <laughs> in a weird way, even though obviously whatever you're about to tell me about, yeah. like you could almost tell me anything at this point. You could tell me aliens invaded. Mm -hmm. You could tell me Joe Biden's head exploded. Well, yeah. You could tell me coronavirus was a hoax. You could tell mm -hmm. me half the country has it. You could tell me almost anything. And I could pretty much believe it because yeah. that's how bananas the world has become. Um, but oddly, Getting off the grid this year, and this is the fourth time I've done this August off the grid thing, in a weird way, this was the easiest because in years mm. past, I traveled, I went to the gym, yeah, I went yeah. to public places. To restaurants. Restaurants. And in those places, they often have televisions where they're showing the news or I was in an airport. Or I was home this whole time. We moved, but I was home. So I had no people around me anywhere. And in other years, if I went to the store... Yeah. People would come up to me like, Dave, I know you're off the grid, but come on, you have your phone on you, don't you? Like, yeah. like literally, Let me see. Keep, Give me that pocket. keeping me honest, I'm not yeah. kidding. I would do that. I'd pull my pockets. I'd be like, I got nothing. But now, uh, because I'm in a mask yeah. when I'm out, That's right. nobody came up to me. So I have had almost no human communication, even this morning when I got here, yeah. just to say hi to the security guard. I was like, whoa, that's what it's like to be with like a human. Because I've, yeah. I've been with David basically on our dog. That's pretty much it. I have no freaking clue what's going on. Well, and I, I'm, I'm a little afraid, honestly. I envy you. I wish yeah. that I had this kind of month away from all the craziness. Before we get into, before I just burst yeah. your oh. bliss and your peace. Yes. How was it? How was it, was it being great. away? Did you miss it? Did no. you, were you itching for the Twitter? Were you... I am excited to be back and I'm excited to be sitting here with you and this is going to be fun and like yeah. people are going to get the reactions in real time and then I'll get right back in the fight tomorrow. Yeah. But it was really, really great. Um, first off, the reason we're doing this here at The Daily Wire is because I moved and we rebuilt the Ruben Report studio, which yeah. will debut tomorrow uh, separately. I noticed we've got um, new graphics We've got new graphics, we've got wow. new music, like my team was busting their butts. One of the things that that was different this year is that in years past when we've gone away and I just, I'm laying at the beach and I'm reading and whatever, um, is my phone is, is literally locked in a safe. We couldn't do that this year because I had like plumbers and electricians yeah. and people working on things and things like that. But also the way we're connected yeah. actually really struck me this year more than past because like I have Sonos music, right? In yeah. my house, like the Sonos system. So like if I wanted to listen to music, I actually needed my phone. Mm -hmm. So I took out an old iPhone and I, it wasn't connected to the, the cellular network, right. but it just had my Wi-Fi to make sure I wasn't going to get notified. I mean, like these weird things or to turn on Nest air conditioning, you need your phone. Like, yeah, that's true. They have that's figured true. out ways. The A lot of security systems now go through the phone, right? Ev right. Every, right. Cameras at my yeah. house, like everything. It all goes through this thing that we're walking around with. And even if you want to get off it, like just yeah. to not know the news, right. like something that should be kind of simple. That thing, that matrix has us so locked in. Yeah. It's crazy. Like there, I guess I could have busted out my old CD player, yeah. my little, my little like boombox. Nextel to call your friends, yeah, right. your Walkman to listen. Yeah, but it was great. It was, I feel, truly, I feel relaxed. I feel calmer. I feel oh, a little yeah. more patient. I also feel um, what that whatever you're going to tell me, and this is what yeah. I thought a lot about over the last couple of days, is that I think 
what I've realized is the reason that this is important to do uh -huh. is that for, especially for guys like us, and, and in a weird way, everyone's become like us, right? Like, meaning creatures of the news, because oh, yeah. this has now taken over everything. And right? in the like, public, too, right? Everyone's in the public. If you have any kind of social media account, you are a public facing person. Right. So while we do it, with fancier cameras and things like that. Everyone is like in this fight, right? Yeah. Now. Everyone's in this thing. And what I realized is when you wake up every day and I try not to have my phone in my room anyway, uh, when I'm on the grid, yeah. um, when you wake up and you're always in the fight and at any given moment, somebody could say something horrible about you or that this media thing, like that keeps you in this, like it, it sounds cliche almost, but like it keeps you like a, like a rat or a hamster on a wheel yeah. and your brain is just going all the time. And it's just like this endless thing that it's always like, feed me, feed me, feed me. And I feel like I really do have some better perspective right now. Yeah. Like, like whatever you're going to tell me again, mm -hmm. world war three could have started Antifa could have taken over the white house. I, I have no clue. Yeah. Um, what if I told you? Yes. What if I said to you, because you're so you're so happy right now yeah. and you're totally at peace. Yeah. What if I told you everything calmed down? You know, there's no way the there's riots no way. stopped and the virus it's cured. And what if I would you believe that? Not only would I not believe you, I yeah. thought a lot about that. Yeah. Because every time someone would come into my house and I had to announce to plumbers and electricians and everybody else, guys, just don't, because <laughs> the news comes, it's like, why would a plumber come into your house and tell you about the news? Except we live in this bizarre world where everyone talks about it all the time, right? So I would literally, someone would come into my house, I'd be like, listen, I know this is going to sound crazy. They don't know don't, who I, they don't, don't know who I am. Yeah. So, it, you know, so, but like, don't tell me about the news. Okay. But that idea that it could slow down or it could stop. There's just no way because every time I told somebody what I was doing, people would be like the same thing. Everyone said the same thing every time. Oh, it's much worse now. <laughs> oh God, it's worse now. You're not going to believe it when you get back. What happened this time? Wait, you don't know about that? And then I'd have to stop. Everyone, they couldn't stop them. So I don't know anything about the news. But you don't. You must know about that. And I was no, no, no. Um, and then so so the idea that it could stop. The yeah. idea that the machine could somehow reverse, like that's what I think what we all want, yeah. is we all sort of like, even if you think about it this way, February or so when the lockdowns began, I guess that was maybe the beginning of March. Yeah. That's not that long ago, right? Like it's like six months. Was it 15 so. days ago? I yeah. was told 15 days to slow the spread. Was it? No. Remember, remember, slow the spread, flatten the, I assume we flattened the, oh, tell me we, we must have flattened the curve. the curve. Can we get the curve on call here yeah. so we can, I think it's flattened. I think it's flattened. But like, that the world is now changing so fast that yeah. it's that February now seems like the good old days. Yeah. And right, I think right. what we all want and what we all need is some people, and I'm really going to try to do this going forward. I've, I think I've tried to do it anyway. I'm going to try to be one of the people that like slow down the, the machine yeah. from just crushing everybody all the time mm. because I, we can start and I have no doubt that almost everything you're going to tell me is bad that there there won't have been like for example I was thinking um, all right well the conventions happened I assume the conventions happened they right? did they okay. did happen I'll spoil that for okay you. we'll get into the convention so the conventions happened but I was thinking like is there any chance like a Democrat got up in the convention and said identity politics is bad or rule of law is good or or the Constitution mm. is good or America's kind of decent mm, well like is there any chance that happened I'm sure not. And I'll just say one other thing and then okay. you should All right. get going here. Uh, so I had no, no news, no nothing. But one thing, one little thing happened, which is one night we were watching Netflix and we X'd out of Netflix, like yeah. went back into Apple TV and something happened for, it was two seconds. Yeah. We somehow got onto the, I guess it was the Democratic National, uh, the, con the convention. And it, all I heard, this is exactly what I heard, was Bernie Sanders. He, I saw his giant head after not seeing anything for 20 days. Yeah. And he goes, Joe Biden will fix our crumbling infrastructure. And then, and then we, we quickly shut the TV off. That's the yeah. only thing I heard. But like that, like stupidity, the yeah. level of, yes, Joe Biden is going to fix our natural crumbling. Finally. Infrastructure. Yeah. He's only been in government 50 yeah, years. Yeah, that old guy who's done it. nothing and the other He was guy around the, when they built the infrastructure. Now they're going to yeah. have to do it again. But I have no idea. There could have been an earthquake. There could, anything could have happened. Well, okay. Trump could have shaved his head. I, I have no idea. I want to start off with the most important news. Yes. Then we'll get down. We'll do it in, in uh, descending order. Yes. Descending of so of level of importance. Okay. I'm going to start with the most important stuff. Okay. Uh, WNBA canceled three games last Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not you the know, WNBA? They that's... did. You know, they did. They actually did. I don't. They think... canceled games, but but uh, wait. 
are they playing in front of people? <laughs> Wait, are they still a league? Is that they? a league? Is that, are we allowed to say that now? No. They cancel the three games for racial justice. So if you want to watch your Atlanta oh, Dream me. or your Washington Mystics play the game, you can't do it for racial justice. It wasn't just them, the NBA, the, the one that people actually watch, canceled games. Why? For racial justice. Wait, you are messing with me. Right? I am not messing with you. They canceled games not because of COVID, but because no. in, in protest of racial and justice. And you don't even know, you don't even, I mean, you're probably still thinking George Floyd or whatever yeah. that was the, no, there have been like seven since then. There have been so many co totally contrived incidents since then. <sighs> Can and I, it, yeah. Well, just on the basketball front. So one of the things that I do uh, is when I'm doing cardio and I, I did cardio, I did about an hour of cardio every day for the last month. That's Ooh. how I'd pretty much start my mornings. I'd have some coffee, I'd jump on the elliptical machine and I watch old NBA games. Yeah. I watch 1990s, you know, Jordan peak years, NBA games and there's a crowd yeah. and people are screaming oh, and yeah, it's you remember fun that. and it's all people. And I said right before I went off the grid, cause I watched like a few minutes of one of these games in the dome or whatever they call it, you know, yeah. their place where there's no people and you're watching millionaires yell at referees <laughs> and it all feels very dystopian <laughs> and evil. It's like, why would anyone want to pay these people at right. this point, why would you want to give your hard-earned money to these? They won't even play basketball for a living. Yeah, like and that. What What are they boycott? Like they're the the millionaire players are boycotting the league, with, and the league is pro BLM or whatever. But they're and they're very pro China. Wait, did and, something new happen that the, the NBA yes. players? Let's put the WNBA aside. We'll put the W for now, yeah, yeah, forever. Yeah. We can put that aside. So something new happened that, yes. that triggered. So I will, the, I will spoil it for okay. you. The, the riots well, are still what, going that's on. What we're doing. That's what we're doing. Yeah. The riots are still going on. Okay. The riots have been going on this whole time. There was, there have been so many new attacks, but I'll yeah. give you the one that everyone's talking about now is BLM's come out. Uh, there, there was Antifa in the streets. Uh, people are very upset about this killing of a man named Jacob Blake. And I'll walk you through the killing of Jacob Blake. Okay. Jacob Blake is a guy who had a warrant out for his arrest. He had a warrant out for sexual assault, domestic violence. He, obviously the, this woman called the cops on him. She said that he comes and beats her up every time he gets really drunk. So the cops are out there, they pull their guns out and he is resisting arrest. They try to tase him. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Where is this? This is in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Okay. So this guy, you know Kenosha, that thriving metropolis. Yeah. So, but Kenosha, Wisconsin, keep in mind, a swing state. This guy's walking then, he's, he's evading arrest. He's got the dr guns drawn on him. He walks up to his car, opens the car door. The car is full of kids, reaches into the car where we all knew he had a weapon stashed, but you weren't allowed to say that until finally it was confirmed. And then at that point, after the police have been yelling at this guy, to stand, they shoot him. And he's still alive, by the way, he's not dead. I think he's paralyzed. He's obviously very. Angry. It was his kids in the car. It is. I guess. I suppose that's a bit unclear. Okay. But you've got these. So uh, part of the. In other words, is, it's just another one of these stories. Where it's another. The one. media now frames it as this is racism. This is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I was thinking about a lot this month, and I think when you get away from it, you can kind of see it a little clearer, is that. Uh, I know guys like us do complain about the media a lot, and I know that more and more people are waking up to it, but it really is an evil machine. Yeah. It really is an evil machine that, that people are making money yeah. on pushing narratives. Sounds like this, like you probably don't have to tell me that much more to give no. me a clearer picture. You get the But idea. now I'm, I'm get, so now people are in the streets of Kenosha. They burn, they burn the city down. And, but this is where it gets even worse. This is what you're talking about with the, the kind of media, just as the puppet masters of yeah. everything, you're always on this wheel. So they're pouring out into the streets, BLM, Antifa, right? And then this one kid, I guess he's a conservative kid goes, to uh, clean up the streets. So he's there, there's a famous picture of him now clearing the graffiti off of murals. Conservatives always clean it up. He's damn, but he came armed because he said, look, there are rioters in the streets. We have it on video that these BLM and Antifa guys are attacking this kid, kicking him in the head, going after him. Takes his gun, shoots three of them, shoots wow. three. Now, these three guys who are now being hailed as heroes, as saints, uh, one of them was a serial domestic abuser. The other was a convicted child molester. One guy was chasing him with a gun. So we're not, we're not these weren't social workers here. That were right, right, after, right. right? And it, and but it the media quite, narrative is now they're somehow the good guys. And the media narrative is that they're the good guys, that this kid is a white supremacist based on absolutely nothing. And the biggest change that's happened since you've been away is the media initially and the left and the universities and the elected officials, 
said there is no violence. There are no riots. Yeah. These are peaceful. Most well, of that's peaceful what they were protests. telling us about Portland. It was right. always peaceful. Yeah, in D.C. and the all over the country, yeah. the inter- M- Minneapolis, yeah. mostly peaceful protests. Yeah. Now they're saying that there is violence and it's being caused by white supremacists. It's all they have left. That's what I'm saying. When you step away from it, it's yeah. so obvious. It's like nauseating. Yeah. All they've got left is that the rest of us are white supremacists. Yeah. And we're not. And that isn't to say that there aren't some white supremacists. There are. But I'm going to go out on a limb here, Knowles, after being off the grid for a month and guess that this kid who was cleaning up is probably not a white not supremacist. Not a white supremacist. And, you know, there's no and I'm going to guess whatsoever. he wasn't looking to shoot people that morning. It, it sort of sounds like that McCloskey story, yeah. which was the, the story with, with the two people defending their house in Missouri yeah. uh, right before I went off the grid, which was, it's not, everyone's trying to frame it that they are bad guys and all this stuff. And it's like, they weren't waking up that morning like, let's bust out the guns. They didn't start. go to someone else's house, yeah, right? They, they were at their house. <sighs> so- God. So the president, to his great credit, comes out and says the kid was acting in self-defense. He went, now, could you imagine any other politician of either party actually going out on a political limb and saying like, uh, rioter is bad, uh, rioters attacking people bad, self-defense totally justified. So Trump goes out there and says this, but this is the way it's being framed. And do you see, do you see the contradiction there that the media ha- are trying to work out? Totally peaceful, no violence at all. All the violence is being yeah. caused by white supremacists. I thought there was no violence. What do you mean all the violence is? And if you look down, obviously, you, there, how many white supremacists are there in the country? Like seven or something how like that? How many times can they pull the same trick before we all wake up? I, and that is what I will tell you. You know, one of the things that I actually did get to do is, I'm sure like you, I get a lot of emails that are nice and people say nice things about me. Or I read your book or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I get a lot of handwritten letters mm-hmm. and I usually don't have a lot of time to be reading them, but I did read a lot of handwritten letters yeah. that people sent me. And almost every time people include the phrase, wake up, like I've woke up. It has something to do with some of the things that you've talked about or people. And it's like this type of stuff. It's like, of course. And it's like, I'm sure you're going to tell me another city, something happened. Yeah. And- yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so the, the riots are going. So on. nothing got no, tempered down. No one. No, it, it only got ratcheted up. It, it only got worse. Yeah. And you do so, realize that this is hilarious that you didn't start with the pandemic. No, that's right. The pandemic is like story number is seven. That, oh, that's not even. The are pandemic we doing a pan- is like, although there, I, I got to tell you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't know, by the way, if there's, if you know, really anything, you could tell me it was over. You could tell me it was a hoax. You could tell me 90% of us have it. You could tell me half the civilizations, anything would, would sort of work out into, oh, that's possible because when you're not paying attention to the news and then you, we live in SoCal, it's yeah. sunny and 90 degrees every day. Everyone here looks great, yeah. is healthy, everything else. And every store, if I went to the supermarket or anywhere else, it like, it sort of feels crazy. I'm not saying it's a hoax. I'm not, but like, it feels kind of crazy. To see healthy people wearing masks. And just the sun all sustain. young, healthy people where yeah. we know it's not killing young, healthy people. And yet, if you even say that, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate. Just, okay. So just then that. I want, I want to know what you, what your hunch is. Do you think that the virus, you know, and people's health and everything, has it gotten better since you've been away or has it gotten worse? You know, are we finally reopening or are we locking down again? Well, I, so I can tell you from my LA experience, I honestly don't know if restaurants are open right now or not. I know I can go to the supermarket and I went to CVS the other day and a guy yelled at me because I was walking into the store without my mask. I did put it on as I was entering, like I was entering an airlock and I got, (laughs) um, so I would guess that it all is worse. I, I would guess that the, the the vision of it that we all hear yeah. or see is worse because that's what the media has to run with, at least through the election. I don't know if it's like, I'm guessing you're not going to read me numbers right now that show me it's much worse or suddenly no. lots of young people are dying or no. something like that. None of that. In fact, it's so much better in California. Yeah. Hospitalizations are dropping. Deaths are dropping. Same thing is true in Orange County. Same this thing is good. In San Diego. Yeah, it's, it's good, right? Good. That's all good. Great. So what's the plan to reopen? No plan. There's no plan. Well, here is the plan. We will nearly reopen, according to Governor Mussolini. We will yeah. nearly reopen. That guy's still around. He is somehow still around. We'll nearly reopen when there is a lower than 2% test positivity rate. Not contagious, not hospitalizations, not deaths. That people, that less than 2% of the tests are coming back positive. 
This is what I'm so never, about. so never, right? This is what I'm talking about about the the rat race and what they get you to do. Yeah, you can find videos. I'm sure you have similar ones too. You can find videos of me saying two weeks into this thing that when they say flatten the curve, that I guarantee you, once we flatten the curve, yeah, that they will pick some other arbitrary thing down the road. That's true. And People and are. I remember, I remember when when Newsom, our governor here in California, when he said, "Okay, we're going to lock down until August 1st." I remember saying. On, on air, people can find the videotape. Yeah. I remember saying, well, there's no reason to think they'll open up then. Yeah. And now they'll just come up with some other arbitrary thing and some other arbitrary thing. And we all keep playing along. Yeah. We all keep playing along. And again, that's not to say it's a hoax. It's, it's to say there's something wrong with the information system or something like that. Like, well, I've, I've got two yeah. two data points for you that just came out. Actually, one data. was admitted by the New York. Is that know. still legal? We're not allowed to, only when it, only when it goes along with the left-wing narrative. Yeah, what do you So, got? out of the New York Times, 90% of uh, people who test positive uh, are no longer contagious. So 90%, so we've been told the whole time that it, even if you seem totally healthy, you could be a asymptomatic spreader and this is gonna kill granny, so you gotta lock yourself in your home. Now we're finding out actually even 90% of people who test positive are really not that contagious. And then this number is pretty crazy from the CDC. This number, by the way, even if you logged onto Twitter today, you wouldn't have seen it because Twitter banned it, even using data from the CDC. Oh, so Twitter's still banning reality. Oh, still Twitter, a, Twitter's gotten way worse. That was a big thing, right, for those few days right before oh, I left the yeah. grade, they were banning Oh, it has only gone up. The, the percentage of COVID deaths that were exclusively caused by COVID, not by other comorbidities, you know, not by all these cancer, whatever, 6%. 6% of people who died of COVID died specifically of COVID, right. which brings the number from around 180,000 down to about 11,000 who died specifically from COVID. You're not allowed to say that on Twitter because do people get it yet. I uh, know they do don't. people get it. They don't, uh, but don't people do don't. get it right. Like the wake up that I just referenced, like it is happening at some level. Right. And you just can't see it or sort of the mainstream tier won't let you see it. Yes. But well, the average true. person is yeah. just going, this is just too obvious. Now it's too ridiculous. We yeah. can see the guy behind the curtain. Like, what are you guys doing? Well, you see that a little bit in the reactions to the party conventions. Yeah. But oh, the, the party conventions. The party so conventions so the, happen. They so both is happen. Biden, Biden's alive. Biden, uh, t technically, I don't, yeah. I mean, that's at least what they're saying. Yeah. So Biden alive. is still a nominee. He I is mean, a I was, nominee. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still and not You convinced. don't know. Do you have any guesses who the vice president? Okay. Is? So, a day or two before I went off the grid, Politico leaked out that it was going to be Kamala Harris. And I okay. sort of felt that was like a little too obvious, even yeah. though he said it had to be a woman. And yeah. we know he's... He said he's, it had to be black. Yeah. Did, he, did he in fact say he it had a, to... a woman of color. Oh, so, so it could have been Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> could have obviously. Yeah, exactly. Um, about a week later, and now, now I have, was off the grid already, yeah. I was uh, in the fruit section. I was buying a melon, actually. <laughs> I do enjoy a little watermelon in the, in the summer months. It gets hot here. And, uh, and there was a woman like, like screaming in joy uh, about Kamala Harris. So I mm. suspect that it is Kamala Harris. I'm guessing it's Kamala Harris. The way you're nodding at me sort of. It is Kamala Harris. She is the worst. She is the worst. She is the worst. I mean, she is the worst. Do you I mean, think she is the worst? Do you think One the more pick time? would have helped him or hurt him in the polls? Do I think that Kamala would help him or hurt him? Well, it can't really, well, first off, the polls at this point, it's like- Who again, knows what the polls mean? It can't really help because the Democrats hated her. Nobody voted for her. Nobody likes right. her. And, and the, the crazy lefties that are running the show right now, the Antifa, Bernie yeah. coalition of Marxist lunatics, they all hate Kamala Harris because they think she's like a corporatist yeah. sellout. But she, ugh, that's so gross. It's so her. gross. And it did, you know, ugh, look- She's the worst. She's the worst kind yeah. of authoritarian. Yeah. You, you remember that moment at one of the debates when she was still in it, when the question was asked to uh, Biden mm -hmm. about would you use an executive action to ban assault weapons or do something on guns? Yeah. And Biden said, people can find this. Biden said, oh, well, it would have to be constitutional. And Kamala Harris looks at him laughing. <laughs> And she says, Joe, can't we just say, yes, we can? <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute. You think that you can use the power of the executive branch to supersede the power of the legislative branch on something that's enshrined in the Constitution? In the Bill of Rights? Yeah, yeah. Like, she's the worst. So Ugh. it's funny you mention that, that witchy cackle because yeah. you'll remember, this is the big problem when Biden picks her. 
Uh, she launched the most vicious attack against Biden that has yet been launched this cycle. She, she called him a vicious racist at those early debates and said he was a segregationist or whatever, right? Oh, right. right Remember right, that? Right, right. The, busing the busing and all this yeah, yeah, ridiculous yeah. thing. So she goes on the Colbert show and Colbert, to his credit, pushes her. He says, uh, uh, Senator Harris, what happened to Joe Biden being a terrible racist? What she And say? she, she puts on the cackle. She goes, ha, 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 ha. It was a debate. And so he says, right, it was a debate, but are, but you know, are you saying you were lying then or it's not? He goes, ha ha ha, it was a debate. It was a debate. It's called a debate. It was a debate. She must've repeated the word and debate. And that's how evil these people are. That, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. The, the, it's all becoming too obvious to everybody. Yes. Yeah. The, the nonsense, she never believed he was a racist. No one in their right mind not. believes Joe Biden is a racist. Yeah. But then you throw it out there and it, and and for anyone that's on the fence about politics that's that's watching this happen, it's like when you see them do it against their own and it's a lie, does it make you wonder when they call everybody else? Maybe it's a lie too. Right. But this stuff, for some reason, it just sticks to conservatives more than it does their own. But wait, so tell me about the, so, the, so the they, polls. They, are, are, they pick Kamala. Yeah. And you know, you, you uh, pick a vice presidential candidate, your polls are supposed to go up. That's the point of picking a vice yeah. presidential candidate. Balances the ticket, maybe you win a state, but it's got to help you. The poll numbers went down. So even Democrats were deeply dismayed by this. Because who, who likes her? Who likes her? She was one of the first people out in the primary. Nobody wanted this woman to be the pick. And so this ties Identity in. Identity politics ruins everything it touches, period. In, including your own base of support. Yeah. Right. It's like even the Democrats kind of made this Faustian bargain where they're like, okay, we'll, we'll do this identity politics thing, which is obviously evil and, and contrary <laughs> to logic. And, yeah. But at least we'll get more support maybe for a little while, but you go in. So first is the DNC yeah. and then the RNC followed. Oh, okay. Okay. DNC, worst produced thing I've ever seen. Yeah. You would think Democrats own Hollywood. They Wait, should. and was it live or not? It was, some of it was live. So some, live meaning they had, there were people. Oh no, no, no. All of it was, it was a Zoom call. It was, the only question is, were they, was it actually going out live or was it did Biden get out of the basement or did he literally do it from the basement? So he did. He actually did somewhat well in his acceptance speech. He slurred some words, but that's par for the course. Yeah. Uh, but he, he was barely in it. He was barely a part of this thing. It was all this weird Zoom call stuff. I actually want to do two truths and a lie with you right yeah. now, just before <laughs> oh, we get into the DNC. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you yeah. tell me which one of these is the lie. Okay. The DNC removed the phrase under God from the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, that feels true to me because they've been trying to do this for a long time. Okay. They booed God, remember? Yeah. It was it 2012? Yeah. So, okay. so that feels true. So that feels really true. Disturbing. Yeah. Okay. Hillary Clinton urged Americans to respect the results of the election. No, that doesn't feel true to me. It doesn't. They, they, they want... Even if it's Biden, even if they think Biden's going to win? They, they're setting it up knowing that Biden's brain is going to explode mm. or something, but she doesn't want people, they, they haven't done it for four years, yeah. these last four years. So that, that does, I guess, well, I, no, I mean, I suppose I could envision a situation where she's hit, yeah. tipping to the people, you know, if our guy wins, let's make sure yeah. we accept it. Right, I guess it's sort wins. of poll dependent, right? Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. If Biden's way up in the polls. And don't forget, when you went off the grid, Biden was way up in the polls. We can maybe get into that a little bit too. Okay. One of my neighbors uh, in, in the new house does have a Joe Biden, uh, you know, little placard in front of his house. It's Biden's sunglasses and it's got the American flag in each eye. Is there anything more contrived than the stupid Biden aviator thing? The, the aviator. There, I wear aviators. He's ruined the He's aviators. ruined aviators. It's so lame. Yeah. Third one, Trump brought peace to the Middle East. <laughs> ah, I like the way you play this game, Knowles. That seems more legit to me than the Democrats <laughs> respecting the election if <laughs> Trump wins. Um, but I'm going to go on the assumption that that is false. Okay. Um, so I, so then you got so that you've got these three. Yeah. DNC removes under God. Hillary yes. Clinton says respect the election. Trump brings peace to the Middle East. Yeah. So which is the lie? Well, Trump didn't bring peace to the Middle East. Although you know, I've been away for a while, Knowles. We live in a strange time. There's peace in the Middle East. There's sort of peace in the Middle we East. We got peace. So, and Trump sort we of got, got peace. It. So there is an historic deal that yeah. was just signed, yeah. normalizing relations between Israel yeah. and the United Arab Emirates. Okay. This is the first wow. time that Israel has normalized relations with an Arab country in at least two decades, I think yeah. 26 years or something like that. This is actually world historic news. Wow. 
And of course, it's being blocked out of the mainstream I'm media. Sure. Even if you had been in the news, you probably wouldn't have seen this during, <laughs> during the week because it's, the mainstream media is not talking about it. So Trump actually does this. He gets absolutely no credit for it, of course. The under God thing, yeah. the DNC did remove it at the start of the uh, Muslim caucus and the LGBT caucus. So it wasn't at the start of the oh convention. My God. Itself, but at those two, could you imagine? It's, that's really it's, twisted, but that's not surprising. seems to me the... The, the LGBT caucus, I guess there's no direct, it's not like that's a religious group. Right, it's not religious, so, all right, let's just put that one aside for a second. But the Muslim caucus? I'm that doesn't make a lot of sense. i sure they believe in God. I think they do. I think I, God they call them a the different religion? name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, so they do, because obviously the DNC is now just totally secular, totally atheistic. And you were right, Hillary Clinton. Of course, I love, I love that it is more believable that Trump brings peace to the Middle East than that Hillary Clinton says respect the election. And not only is it believable, it's true. Hillary Clinton went out there and said, Joe Biden should not concede this election they are under, to start a war. under any circumstances. Not just he shouldn't concede, it's close, it'll be a little, under any circumstances. It's, it's so obvious to me that the Democrats invited this evil cancerous ideology into the house. They invited it in. And now it has ransacked the entire place. It's pulling the copper wiring from the yeah. walls on the way out. The entire thing is collapsing. Yeah. And there is, so it, really this is true. Like, I don't mean this to be hyperbolic. There's almost nothing you could have said to me yeah. that happened at the DNC thing, short of, the, short of Biden burning the American flag, like right up there, like, yeah. you see, let's just do it, everybody, um, that I wouldn't have believed because I don't, I hope maybe more people are realizing how, how evil and corrupt and anti-American and everything else this thing has become. Yeah. And, and I look forward to criticizing the Republicans in just a moment when you tell me a little bit about what happened there. But like this, there's nothing, we've discussed this a million times in the last year, yeah. there is nothing the liberals can do. The, the good, decent liberals who are, mm -hmm. who are scattered throughout the galaxy and there's very few of them left, there's nothing they can do to stop this thing. If, no. you, think, if you think that Joe Biden is the thing that's gonna stop Antifa and this and the the rot that is AOC and the rest of them. And I just I say it all the time, but I can't wait till it takes out Bernie. That that when it comes around for Bernie yeah. and they're dancing as they destroy him, which they will. I like, he's, a, he's, a he's a conservative, corrupt, who, corrupt white supremacist. And he backed Joe Biden after backing Hillary Clinton and he was yeah. never a true revolutionary. They'll, they'll get him, he, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but man, at the, the God thing, I mean, that is, you know what it reminds me of that, you remember that quote from Marianne Williamson? Remember Marianne and the, the crystals? The dark psychic forces. Well, remember when she said the thing about um, when she got caught off mic, or she got on a hot mic yeah, after yeah. she was on some show where she said, you know, I understand. She's like, I've never gotten the hate from the right that I get from the left, which yeah. is her own side. Yeah. And she goes, I understand why the conservatives call them godless. And it's like, it does make sense. They, they don't believe in anything other than power. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and, that, that, that doesn't mean every single one of them. I don't think they're all awful people, but Biden, who I think is probably a decent man, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He doesn't know what he believes anymore. And now the party, ugh, it's gross. I actually feel it, gross. It I was. I felt great about a half hour. Yes, no, it's, well, it's only gonna yeah. get worse. I mean, yeah. we, we've barely oh, really? gotten We're into not, it. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing about the DNC was it was about nothing. It was truly about nothing. It was about you know, they had 10 million different identity groups, yeah. 5 million of which were created in the last six months. Yeah, yeah. And it was all about orange man bad. And there, there really was no, at, at any point, there was no specific argument for why we need to vote for Joe Biden. One thing that was curious about it though, you know, they take God out of a few of these caucus meetings. They've got this kind of anti-American sentiment. They say they're going to destroy capitalism in the youth caucus. They, you know, because this was all a big Zoom meeting, all the Republicans infiltrated it. And so you actually got these kind of secret meeting videos. It was oh one of the goodness. positives of coronavirus, uh, of the lockdowns rather. But the, the one thing is they tried to seem patriotic. Now, isn't that- Oh, a, they, they actually tried they it? They tried. Yeah, but they can't do but it. But they, they can't do it. It was not believable. Andy Cuomo got out there and he said, yeah. we're America tough. We're gonna be, we're the great country. We're gonna be America tough. 18 months ago, Andrew Cuomo said, we're not gonna make America great again. America was never that great. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Yeah. Why so, are they trying to do it? As you were watching it, as someone that's not on that side, you're yeah. obviously not a Democrat, 
but I know you're a pretty fair guy. Mm -hmm. Like, were you trying to pilfer out anything sensible? Because I really, you know, yeah. even though I'm obviously not a Democrat, I don't consider, you know, I'm registered here as a Democrat because I wanted to vote against Sanders. Yeah. Which is, it's all so stupid. But um, I do try to look at both things objectively and pilfer some kind of, yeah. like, can I get something honest? Like, can this all be, eat? was there anything there? No. Like, I, did Biden offer anything? There's nothing left. No. The, the thing he offered is he said, the, the theme of his campaign is, we're going to restore the soul of the nation. And and Donald Trump called neo-Nazis very fine people at Charlottesville. Which is not true. Which is not true. It's obviously, he says in the next paragraph, he says, I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white supremacists who should be condemned totally. Yeah. Doesn't matter. No, he said that in the previous, before he said the thing about the good people on both sides. He said that first, actually. And, and he, That's the part that always gets cut. That, yeah, because yeah, they never yeah. play them together. Yeah. But that's the lie that the campaign was founded on. And so when you listen to Biden, you think, wow, he's making a really good argument about a fantasy world. About a thing that didn't happen. About a thing that didn't happen. And so how can, he arrives at this conclusion based on a false premise. So that was, that was the DNC, all vague, all whatever. The reason that the Democrats are still pushing all of these race riots and stoking all these race riots, because the RNC did a great job of black and minority outreach. Mm -hmm. This was the, you know, it's so funny. In a way, it was like almost pandering. You thought, oh my gosh, it's like every yeah, black yeah. Republican in the world is coming and speaking at this thing. Uh, but they wanted to make the point. The Democrats are calling us racist. We are manifestly not racist. The RNC, I got to tell you, I think it's because of Trump. So wait, wait, was it in Florida? I'm forgetting where the it was. The RNC was all, all over the was, place. Oh, so it wasn't, phys that wasn't physical either. Oh. It was all, except they, they made, there was a difference here. The, the Republican convention came afterward and they learned from the Democrats. The, the problem with the Democrat convention, it was so, it was so dull. Mm -hmm. there, no, there was no surprises, right? The Republican convention was people giving live speeches to nobody. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that was kind of hilarious. You know, Kim Guilfoyle was a very energetic, you know, right. she kind of got memed afterward. Um, but, but, you know, people were passionate and they were giving these live speeches, warts and all. There were some really amazing highlights of it. And, and the difference was that the Democratic convention was all vague. It was all Trump's a meanie and he's bad. The Republican convention put up the victims of these riots. Do you remember David Dorn, the black uh, former, oh, the, police, the former officer police officer who was officer. killed yeah, yeah. In, in the riots? Yeah. His widow gave Ooh. an unbelievable speech. It just totally, uh, the parents of uh, Kayla Mueller, who was abducted by and killed by ISIS, they gave a speech specific about Obama's policies, Obama Biden's policies. Uh, it, it was that specificity that really, really got you. And then Trump's speech, which went on for 70 minutes, was all specifics. It was, I did this, I did that, I did this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. After, after the convention, his approval among black voters, right, we're talking about all this racial division in the riots, yeah. how much do you think it changed? Do you think it went up or down? I've kind of given it away already. Uh, I th uh, Knowles, I've been out of the game for a little yes. bit, but you did lead me there. Yeah. Um, you know, I tweeted about a year ago that, yeah. tr that Trump's going to get 30% of the black vote. That's an insane, no one That's in their right mind number. would say that, but I put these things out there on Twitter. Yeah. That's what I do as yeah. a professional. Um, I'm going to guess that his support, well, tell me what the support was going support in. Support was going in, and this is, this is mid-August. So yeah. These are very recent numbers. Support was 15%. 15%? 15% approval. Yeah, I'm guessing it could, it could be around 30%. So. It hit, it hit. 24 yeah. already. And by the way, that's only factoring in the first two days. That's not even factoring in the last day of yeah. after. It was just an amazing surge. Because you got to remember, you say, oh, 24, that's not that big. That's a 60% jump, right? If you go up that many points over, over 15, if you go up nine points, that's a 60% jump. Well, you know what it is? You can't bullshit people forever. Yeah. Because eventually the masses wake up. Like the bullshitters aren't that good at bullshit. I think that that's starting... To, to become what, what is real. So it's like, yeah. if, you're, if your whole narrative is, America is evil, it was founded on racism, 1619 Project, systemic racism, everything's evil, we're an oppressive state, the patriarch, all of these things. Yeah. Well, then you'd go, all right, if all of those horrible things are true, yeah. I guess they had something to do with the time before Trump. You know what I mean? You can't suddenly blame it all on Trump. So in a weird way, their, their own logic or their own... Um, their own nonsense, the, the nonsense that they were peddling about how evil we all are and how evil the system that has freed more people than any other country ever, the, the more they've peddled that nonsense, in a way it actually is telling you that Trump isn't the horrible evil thing. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I guess, 
I guess Obama was pretty evil. He was part of it. And I guess Biden was part of it. And that Nancy Pelosi, you haven't yeah. told me anything about Pelosi's. Pelosi, she's, she's still ticking she's as still, far as I can tell. She's still, still eating her ice cream. Yeah. But, but you know what I'm saying? Like if there, if your whole story is yeah. how horrible America is, which I suspect and has always been, which yeah. is what I suspect most of the DNC, what the convention was. Yeah. Well, in many ways you're actually saying, okay, well then Trump's not to blame for any right. of it. He, right. He's just a new guy. You may not like him, but he's a new guy who, by the way, at his last uh, State of the Union was talking about all-time low black unemployment and the Congressional Black Caucus sat there like this. Yeah. Furious. I thought that was a good thing, but what do I know? No, that's, that's right. If there is systemic oppression, if the system yeah. is rotten, then it, it's you not the You can't blame this guy. Fault. He's only been doing it for three years. Well, you know, speaking of these specific people, yeah. I do want to get into a little a little kind of political celeb news. You got to be in on the gossip, a little bit of paper. Yeah, yeah, give me something. Huh? What's going on? So, who got destroyed? Someone must have been destroyed. People got destroyed. People, okay. People got destroyed. I want you to tell me which one of these is not true. Oh god. Okay. Yeah. I'll just give you I'll give you four. Okay. And one is not true. One is not true. Okay. Okay. Jerry Falwell has resigned because he was found out to be in a cuckold voyeur thruple with the pool boy. <laughs> That's the first one. Kellyanne Conway has resigned from her post at the White House. Candace Owens is pregnant. Jake Paul's house was not raided by the FBI. Which one of those? Well, you're asking me, a, I got a double negative that yes. one. Yes. All right, so Jake Paul's house was not raided. Yes. I feel like his house being raided is probably true. I don't really know who he is. Yeah, he's like He gets like hit a in the nuts or something on YouTube. I'm not yeah. totally sure what he does. Yeah. Um, but okay, so that, that, that he was not raided, yeah. I feel like maybe he was raided. Candace, okay. I'm good friends with Candace, but I haven't spoken to her in a month. Okay. But I'm gonna guess she could be pregnant. So I'll, okay. I'll take Candace as pregnant. Uh, the Jerry Falwell cuckold thing is, uh, I think that's a little beyond your imagination. You so I'm going to say that that's true. You're going to say that the president of um, a major... I want to be very clear. I love Liberty University. I yeah, I love Liberty. People. I've met Jerry, nice guy from our yeah. interactions. Yeah, yeah. But that seems somewhat possible, I suppose. Because okay. I, I don't picture you in, coming up with that story. because you're You a don't good, know what's you're going on. Wholesome, and you don't know what's going on. You're a good, wholesome on. guy. So, okay, so, that, so Falwell and Candace, what, what was the other one? Kelly and Conway is leaving the White House. That just seems like to nothing for you to bring it up in this, so I'll accept that one as true. Okay. So I guess Jake Paul <laughs> yeah. not yeah. being raided? <laughs> yes. <laughs> those are all, I mean, you flip the knot, obviously. Yeah. All of those stories are true. All of those. Jake Paul's house was raided by the FBI, so that, that flip was- Okay, let's just put that one aside. Yes. I, I, okay, forget that one. Kellyanne Conway that. stepped down. Okay, Kellyanne Conway is a scandal or she down. just stepped down? It's a bit of a scandal. It's not a right. scandal. It's nothing she did. It's that her daughter made all of these social media posts oh, yeah, trying yeah. to become emancipated, that. right? Yeah. And so uh, Kellyanne Conway and uh, her husband, George Conway, are stepping back down from their jobs. Kellyanne, obviously, at the White House. George Conway from the Lincoln Project. If you, oh, can, call, those if you are, can call that those, a job. Those great people, yeah. Yeah, those great people. So she is stepping down. It's too bad. It's, it's a, a family issue. I think, it, obviously, it's been heightened by the media scrutiny and just how awful they've been to that family. But that's pretty normal. You know, the Falwell thing, I almost didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, can you, can you I didn't, say it so, to me one more time? I, I just want to fully understand. It's so, br I, hate, I hate that it's a news story. I actually feel very bad for Jerry Falwell here. Yeah. I, but this is a story. His wife slept with the pool boy. Okay. There's another allegation now from a Liberty student that his wife propositioned this Liberty student and they got a little frisky. Okay. There is now an accusation from the pool boy that Jerry Falwell watched. Now that we don't know, apparently this pool boy was extorting them. There had been kind of rumblings of this for, for a little while. So Jerry Falwell now has formally resigned from Liberty University. It's, I, it, I what's mean, just, what's your just personal? What's your well, my reaction is just personally having been to Liberty University yeah. and spoke there at convocation. I mean, it was an absolutely incredible moment, and I, I don't think that that just hearing you tell me that doesn't change any of the reality of what I saw there with the students and yeah. with the staff and the dean and and everything else. Um, you know, are people into weird stuff and like are are 
is the way the media operates to now try to destroy all of us yeah. for anything they can get any of us on and, our, and do all of us have things that we're not proud of or a past or a life before fixing ourselves or any of those things, myself included. Of course we all have things. Um, I, none of my things involve the pool boy, but you know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. like that, that, I mean, that, it all just feels gross. It doesn't feel this like This is something. the thing. Yeah, you know, like, it's mean, like, you know what? Hope, hopefully he can work it out with his wife and he can yeah. make amends with whoever he has to make amends with. And yeah. yeah. I know it's, it's this thing where- I'm sure the media and the lefties- They've would been so nice. Right. They've yeah, respected no, no. their privacy. And they've said all, all false forgiveness. The glory they're, of God. They're into yeah. forgiveness. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah, yeah. They, they're before the grace of God go I, yeah. you know, of course. Yeah. yeah, not quite. They had a field day. They were so, so happy. And it's so funny because it, it occurred to me the media are the ones, the left are the ones who say, do whatever you want. You can, you know, it's empowering. Yeah. There's a, there's a very popular song that you missed. We'll get into it in a little bit. Is the Macarena back? It's, uh, it's a little racier than the Macarena. Oh God. But they tell you everything's yeah. all good. Be sexually you... liberated, have sex with a zillion people, do whatever until Jerry Falwell does it. And then what did they say? You're a hypocrite mm -hmm. because he sinned. Is it hypocritical when Christians sin? I don't think so. Yeah. Right? Christians say, okay, we sin. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why we need forgiveness and everything. So it's just been, it's been a sort of awful story. I'm kind of glad he's going into the wilderness for a little bit, and hopefully they lay off him. You know what's interesting is um, there were two, I'm going to blank on at least one of the guy's names, but there were two stories about Democratic, uh, the donor, who was the guy, Buck? Ed, oh, yeah, Ed Buck. Here in West Hollywood, who was giving homeless black guys meth and having yeah. sex with him. He's been in pictures with Hillary and whatever. The media completely ignored that one. And, I'm, and I'm not, them, right? I'm not saying, yeah. oh, right. I think he, he actually, made overdose. Someone died, a someone died couple, in his yeah. apartment, yeah. Um, so that, but that story got totally buried because he's on, you know, he's on the right side, right? Um, and then there was the story of the guy that lost, uh, Andrew Gilliam, is that his name? The guy yeah, yeah, who Andrew lost, Gillum, yeah. Andrew Gilliam, who lost, uh, he was almost going to be governor of Florida. Yeah, he was he that, got, yeah. He got caught doing meth and having sex with a bunch of guys and whatever. I, I don't begrudge him, I, I, I don't begrudge him doing anything. You could, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not for legalizing meth, but I don't begrudge people for doing stuff and I don't begrudge people for having consensual relations. But like, again, it's to your point of if that was a Republican or if yeah. that was a Christian, then we know these things get blown up, but they're Democrats. So somehow they can get away with everything while also making sure that everyone else is destroyed for it. That, yeah. that right there is the thing that we have to get past as a nation. All the good people have to get past this thing where the double standards stay intact. And I think that, I think the Trump just implicitly gets that. Yeah. I mean, there, there's also a perverse logic to it by the way, which is the Democrats have no standards anymore, right? There's no, the left has no standards anymore. And so the only thing to be judged on is hypocrisy. <laughs> but if you have that's any standards at all, right. then you say, okay, hypocrisy, that's a bad thing, but there were these other bad things too. And you don't, but, right. them, but, but everything else is good to go. Exactly. God, exactly. So one, Knowles, I'm thank gonna, you. I'm you know, about that one. And, and it's about time, you know, I try, I get one every five years, yeah. one every five That's years. I come one. up with one. That's a good one. So the, the convention's okay. Fine. The okay. conventions went good. well as they're leaving though. So that one convention, the RNC ends on the white house lawn, cause you're not allowed to do it anywhere else. Right. So they do it on the white house lawn as people are leaving, they get mobbed. They get absolutely, the, the people who are congressmen, senators, get mobbed by BLM oh and Antifa. God. To the point that Rand Paul at one point is grabbing a cop to help the cop because the cop was being attacked and Rand Paul jumps in. Rand Paul, wow. they try to kill Rand Paul every six months and he yeah. somehow survives. Right. And so he's you know helping everybody out. But these were very provocative situations. The rioters uh, who were largely BLM and there was one very shrill white woman uh, uh, targeted a, 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 a congressman who lost his legs in Afghanistan and uh, were like threatening him. And this guy's obviously dealt with the Taliban. He's not worried about these shrimps, right. but still very provocative situation. Wait, the, wait. So the, this, this is at the end of the convention. They're just trying to get to their cars. Just like they're to literally to their hotels, just to their cars. Yeah. yeah. These are leaving the white house. And did yeah. people know that there were huge protests outside? They, uh, you uh, could they hear them. Have. You so, could hear them a little bit. Oh, wow. And, but there's, that, that was the way out. I mean, frankly, it was the biggest show of the, of any of the conventions was yeah. watching this unfold in real time. Jeez. But one thing that was so amazing is, and you might have seen this before you left, there was this phrase that kept cropping up, say her name. And they were talking about the killing of Breonna Taylor, yeah. which, which by the way, we, this was presented to us as this woman was totally innocent and she had no role in any of these crimes. And it was just a killing and a murder by the police. Turns out that wasn't true. Turns out leaked court documents are now saying that she was 
involved in these, these drug crimes. She was part of this enterprise. And so, as always, this is a much murkier situation than anyone thought. They're screaming, say her name, at Rand Paul, who authored a bill naming Breonna Taylor and, and trying to put an end to no-knock warrants. But they didn't care. No one knew that. You're bad no matter what. It's not about saying anybody's name. So were, were people hurt? Were any like public officials hurt? Or? People were uh, hassled about. I mean, yeah. you know, they probably had to go buy a new suit or something like that. Nobody was killed, fortunately. Nobody was really attacked. And how did New York Times and MSNBC and everybody else spin this one? So the white supremacists? The white supremacists they... are out there always. But you know what it is. In there, yeah. You know what they do? They try to be fair and balanced. Yes. When BLM and Antifa and the left go and just unilaterally attack, conservatives. They like to say that, you know, conservatives and leftists clashed. It was a clash. Yeah, yeah. It was a clash, you know, <laughs> kind of, yeah, there are very fine people on both sides, I guess yeah. is what they're really saying. Yeah. So that was, that was the end of the RNC. This ties in with the VP pick. Yeah. How are the poll numbers looking? When you, when you left, how were yeah. the poll numbers looking? The poll numbers for Biden, like for Biden, presidential. For Trump, for, yeah. yeah, I think Biden was usually up by like seven or nine points or something like that. Yeah. But wait, before we just fully do on the, go on that, yeah. was at the DNC, oh, there was, it was all virtual. So there was no place for people to destroy things. No. So that was a really clever move by them because their own base, yeah. that's what people don't understand. The base wants to destroy the party. And then these pathetic people like yeah. Joe Biden are trying to just hold together the house that has already been ransacked. Right. So they're smart, actually, to have not done a convention. A, because he probably wow. shouldn't be out there in front of people, but, but B, because their own base would have burned the freaking thing down. And how would the media have then spun that? You know what I mean? Like the, the BLM, progressive, Marxist, blah, blah, base, they hate Biden, they hate Kamala, yeah. they hate Hillary, they, they hate anyone that could be thought, they hate Pelosi, yeah. you know, they, they like AOC, and I guess Ilhan, and, and they, and they, the, they the like- squad. Right, the squad. they like that, and that thing will destroy itself, as we talked about before, but it was a pretty shrewd move then to do it all virtually. You know, your month away actually I, gave you a perspective that I, I did like. not consider little perspective, that. man. Because it seemed to me, they had, you know, there had been rumblings, okay, we're gonna do it virtually, we're gonna do it online, but he still didn't know, is it gonna be in Charlotte, is it gonna be in Jacksonville, is it gonna be in Milwaukee? I had just assumed, because the left has been so aggressive against the conservatives, that, it w that shutting down the conventions was about shutting down the Republican convention. But no, no. it's to keep your own base that you've ginned up into hating America and wanting to destroy everything. And I mean, what did freaking, what's his name? Uh, Buttigieg, yeah. the most vanilla nothing. Yeah. What was he saying about Bernie? You know, you're going to burn down the whole system. That's what you want to do. Remember that last debate before Super yeah. Tuesday? You're going to burn down the whole thing. So they all knew. I mean, that's the thing. They're all playing with fire. And right. now they've brought in a fire captain with dementia. Yeah. This is a problem, people. But it, but nothing they do can stop it. I, I You know, I've had a pretty good track record these last couple of years yeah. on, on picking these things. Nothing they do can right. stop it. There's this no. thing is going to destroy the entire party and every sane liberal along with it. And it, it just is. Because they had already, they were talking about, the, the Democratic activists, we're talking about 1968 all over again. We're going to burn this thing down, right? So they shut it down. There's no, there's no convention, no real convention, you know, mm -hmm. in person. Republicans a little bit at the White House. So is there going to be voting? Are you going to get to go to a ballot box on uh, November oh, 3rd? Oh, God. So now that now we're really talking about that. I mean, right before I went off, the big thing was mail-in ballots, which I think is a, a, the idea that with a pandemic and with race riots and general state of chaos and nobody believing anything, the idea that we'd suddenly alter significantly our voting <laughs> system, that seems, uh, as the yeah. kids say, problematic yes, to me. You know, that, that seems like you don't add in another yes. crazy element Unless the whole freaking game, whatever we're talking about here, is designed to just make everyone crazy all the time. And I think that might just be possible. And maybe it is. Yeah. So they had been flipping the mail. The polls, you, the polls yeah. now. Oh, yes, yeah. the polls. Let's I should not mention go this. too far. This is so a little was, I think news. it was around seven to nine. It yeah. was seven to nine points in favor of Biden. So, so that, has, that has shrunk, but Biden is still leading nationally. The key here is that in the swing states, the gap has shrunk, in some cases, statistically to nothing. One, one case is Minnesota. Yeah. Now, Minnesota, you'll recall, blue state. Minnesota- That's a wonderful haven of peacefulness. It's a, it's a very- the last I remember. A very peaceful haven of fire. Yeah. Mo oh, the yeah. new one, by the way. So when you left, it was uh, mostly peaceful protesters. Yes. 
Now they can't hide the fact that the whole country's on fire. Yeah. So they say, fiery, but mostly peaceful protests. Fiery, but mostly peaceful. Man, for anyone that didn't watch our 1984 on yeah. U, the book club video, they really should watch that because this is what they do with language. Okay? Basically us reading the newspaper. Yeah. Uh, even though we're reading right, 1984 yeah. by George Orwell. Yeah. So yeah. In, in Minnesota, very peaceful. Uh, the polls have shrunk such that Trump and, and Biden are basically in a dead heat. Ronald Reagan won 49 states in 1984. He didn't win Minnesota. Minnesota is a stubborn state. And now they're running even. And where's the next riot? In Wisconsin. So it creates this problem, doesn't it? That the, the riots, which have clearly been encouraged by the Democratic Party, and you, you've got videos of Ayanna Presley, of, of Hillary Clinton, of Nancy Pelosi, all these people saying, yeah, go out, burn it down. Maxine Waters, mob people, get in the streets. Chris Cuomo, protests don't have to be peaceful. Well, they've encouraged it. But now wherever the, the, prote the protests, the riots are happening, Trump's numbers are doing great, yeah. and Biden's numbers are going down. This is, this is the fatal flaw of what they're doing. By playing with fire, literally, the average person, the average person who's not purely political, mm -hmm. the average person that just has a job yeah. and wants to raise kids and have a house, and that's it, and you know, play video games or whatever the hell it is they do with their free time. Yeah. If their choice is, oh, we can either burn the whole thing down, literally, we will watch our stores burn down, we will watch the economy collapse, we will watch the whole system just crumble in front of us or orange man who's a little weird with the hair and he talks kind of funny in the yeah. twitter they're going to all choose that it's just so obvious if that now i'm not saying that's really what the choice is but if if that's what we're being given if that's just what the, if yeah. that's what the the funnel has yeah. you know the funnel of ideas or whatever you want to say has just like left us with these choices yeah. one or the other i i think you're probably I will say it right now. I think we could be looking at a Reagan re-election situation. We, we actually could. And it's this odd thing where what, you have to ask yourself, and maybe you have insight because you're a, at least a former Democrat or I guess still a registered Democrat. Yeah. Why would the Democrats encourage these riots that are going to kill their poll numbers? Because they don't, the, because the new Democrats, the progressives, the people can't understand. I, I was in it, so I know what it is. That's why I was able to like... Yeah do whatever it is that I've done over these last couple of years, like they, they don't believe any of this is good. They, th that is the they fundamental yeah. truth. Yeah. Now, I don't think, I think Biden thinks that this is fundamentally good, yeah, yeah. but he's lost at this point. Like yeah. he's just the old yeah. vestige trying to hold the thing together. I mean, he's like physically lost. No, he doesn't no, know what we're Yeah, is. which is sad by the way, yeah, you know is. what I mean? Like e even we can make all the jokes we want about that, but it's, it's actually it sad, sad it that is. someone on, on what clearly are the beginnings of dementia or some other cognitive decline yeah. has been thrust into this position and whether he even knows it or not, or is being used. But I was saying months ago that you, well, if you're a Biden supporter, you have to know yeah. you're voting for the vice president. You're not voting for no. Joe Biden, obviously, but they have unearthed something here that, man, it's, it's bad. Well, because it, it's really bad. The, so they're encouraging nationwide mail-in. That's the big, the big yeah. uh, scam. Seems like it, that would be the easiest way to manipulate votes, doesn't it? How? If you were going to do it, Manipulate votes super easy. What, what, what would be the best way to what do it? What are you saying? Are you saying that just because in California, when I get my ballot, it actually has my political party listed on the ballot? You saying just because you can go harvest votes from senior citizen homes? Are you saying just because there was major mail voter fraud in, in New Jersey that we saw just a number of weeks ago? Uh, you saying they might steal the election that way? Is that what Knowles, you're saying? as you know, I, I just moved yeah. and uh, several times in the last year, I took videos and I posted screen captures of people <laughs> literally stealing mail out <laughs> of my mailbox. Yeah. I'm not saying they were harvesting ballots. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know if they were just kids trying to find credit cards. I, who the hell knows what they were? But the point is, like, if you want to make the system even more weak or have even more people not trust the system, then you would alter the system right before an election. Ugh. So, oh, gross, you want to hear the, the craziest part of that? We got so, a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work well, to do. Shit. And who? And the, the, here's the trouble, though. And there was a local news station that did an experiment to see how the mail-in ballots. Were. Oh, I saw that. That you was right. Was before, yeah, yeah. That was right before. This was right before. Brilliant. Brilliant. It was great. Right. Yeah. And then, what's the result of it? They mail them in. Yeah. They get two birthday cards. <laughs> so I don't know. That's, <laughs> some wires get crossed. They yeah. lost three out of 100 ballots. Yeah. That that throws an election. Three percent throws an election. Right. So. You go into that already, you got 80 to 100 million voters expected to vote by mail. This is going to be a big problem. You're not going to know the results on election night. That's guaranteed, right? People are going to blow past the deadlines. It's mm -hmm. going to take too long. So already you've got this constitutional crisis. This is what's so perverse about it, though. 
The Democrats who pushed for this insane, corrupt mail-in thing are now accusing President Trump of trying to steal the election. How? Through the mail. Through the mail. Because they saw that there was a, a, a mailbox that had been moved in Burbank, California. I'm not joking. They looked at Burbank, Burbank. California. You know, well, that huge, is huge the Trump stronghold. Ikea is in Burbank. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. I can maybe piece this thing together. No, that's true. You're right. Yeah. They, they actually will take that photograph and say, well, because a mailbox was closed in Burbank, Trump is trying to steal the election through the vulnerable mechanism that we have been foisting on the country. You know what it feels like to me? Yeah. Reality is now on trial. That's, mm. that's basically where we're at. Mm. That's where we're at is that reality is on trial. Um, when we were driving over here today, yeah. David was saying to me, you know, uh, you're gonna sit down with Knowles and get all this, like, how, how do you feel about all this? And I was kind of like, not nervous. I, never, I don't get nervous for any of these things, but like this, I, I had this vision that we would be in this position where you would say like a whole bunch of things to me and then it would all be like, well, okay, we're all just going to view the world very differently than yeah. each other. Yeah. You'll find some people in your world who will view the world in a similar way, and hopefully you'll be able to strengthen bonds with them and maybe build community with them and all of those things. But then there's going to be this whole other side, and this goes for both sides, right? Um, there'll be like this whole other community that will just believe completely reverse things. Yeah. And that's why reality is on trial. It's like, how do we do something now? Jordan used to talk about this all the time when we were on tour, that you want a healthy left and right. You yeah. want conservatism fighting for the old traditions yeah. that are good versus liberals that are gonna push new ideas forward. You don't want the thing to snap yeah. and then just go one way or the other. You don't, even a hardcore conservative does, I think in their truest sense, probably doesn't want purely that. Yeah, I would, I would allow say, in yeah, my perfect we, we country, I, you know, I would allow, I'd have obviously 99% conservatives and maybe one libertarian. Yeah, yeah, that you fun? Allow, no, yeah, that'd be fine. You'd like one guy to be able yeah. to, to smoke pot on his yeah. doorstep. And, yeah, 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 that'd be kind of fun to have every so often. But, but yeah. man, we are, we are in a reality war. I, yeah, I think that's, that's what, you know, we call it the culture war, but I think yeah. it's starting to become the reality war. That seems to me where we're at. And the issue that you have, I don't know if the first one of these happened before you went off the grid, but you had an image of an MSNBC reporter standing in front of a burning- Oh, Ali Velshi. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ali Velshi standing in front of the thing. There's nothing to see here. It's mostly peaceful. Uh, dude, there's a building exploding. On fire. But, yeah. We got another one on CNN about a week ago. We got another, it was the same thing. It was like, you could have just swapped the reporters. It was the exact same thing, same story. But do you see why they can't stop? They can't stop because they're in so deep Hmm. That to stop, to stop that wheel that yeah. we were talking about before, they would have to, they, they'd have to commit Harry Carey. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'd have to just <laughs> impale themselves on their own swords. Mm -hmm. That would be the only way. They would have to say, yes, yeah. we have been bullshit artists, epic yeah. bullshit artists. You For know, decades. Speaking of bullshit arts, like, yeah. is the New York Times still a newspaper or did that thing wrap up? It was, I, I mean, it was crumbling. I don't, right I don't think it's been a newspaper. They had the announced 90s, they weren't yeah. going to do news anymore. or They were going to run it by like a seventh grader. So yeah, like the trans <laughs> seventh grader was going to be able to correct things, something like that. Yeah, All of the editors of the New York Times now have to be trans seventh yeah. graders and you, you have to trans all of the kids. Well, actually, yeah. so the New York Times is still whatever it is. I'm not going to say it's a newspaper, but it's still whatever it is. Yeah. But on, on the school front, there is some really weird stuff going on. So... So, oh, right. Are schools opening? Like, what's going on there? Do we have schools anymore? So let's look at New York. Obviously, giant school system. I come from the New York public you education. Come from, as do I. As do you. As a matter of fact, that's yeah. right. So New York has no plan to reopen restaurants. No, no plan. They said maybe June of next year. They just don't know. They're just shooting from the hip. However, schools are going to be back in session. It was just today. It was delayed. So now they're going to push it. It was supposed to already start. But Wait, so schools are not starting in New York next. Well, I guess it would be today. It would be right? would today. It and they've, today? they have yeah. delayed it, but they, they did. And they got a lot of flack for saying the schools have to reopen. And no one understood why are the schools. It made perfect sense to me. You still want to indoctrinate the kids. You've still yeah, got, you've got, got a place to warehouse got the kids. to push the indoctrination have to at do all it. costs. Yeah. You know, it got so weird that in outside of New York, you go to Durham, North Carolina. The Durham public school system has half a dozen schools. They are, they close their schools. Schools are not reopening. Okay. So instead what they're doing, it's all online learning, but they are operating six learning centers and the learning centers are going to allow kids to come in 
and you know, with their laptops and do the online learning. Do you know where the learning centers are? Oh. The learning centers. At prison, what? No, what? The well, county prison? Sort of. The learning centers are in the schools, which are closed. <laughs> no, but it gets better, Dave. It gets better. Because, wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I know it's hard. Because I'm just getting back on the grid, so maybe yes, my English isn't so Maybe. Great. What you're telling me is Durham has closed the schools. Mm -hmm. Clo totally closed. Then totally they've closed. announced that these centers will open where the kids can come with their laptops. To do remote learning. To do remote learning. Mm -hmm. And that is at the schools that are closed. That's correct. Yeah. Makes sense, doesn't it? But actually, the, what you're probably saying is, though, the only way that would work is if the school district charged the parents more money to come use the schools which are closed to do the online learning from the schools that you can't go to, right? That would, that would make sense. So in order to use the remote learning centers at the schools, parents have to pay $140 a week plus $35 registration fee. Unless you're a bureaucrat who works for the government, in which case you get a discount. What's the, what's the Daily Wire uh, policy on that word? Uh, oh, it's, it's your show, my friend. Yeah. We are at I mean, your that show. That is fucking bananas. It's insane. But it's again, insane. do you see what I'm saying? That there is nothing too stupid for this movement. Yeah. There is nothing too insane for this movement. Yeah. It, it will eat away and rot out ev whatever institution yeah. allows this stupidity in. It will destroy it. Yeah. And that is what it sounds like is happening in Durham, North Carolina. Speaking But wait a minute. Yeah. Why would they need more money to do that? I assume everyone's still paying taxes. They didn't they're they're giving still, tax rebates to the people. They're all them. still paying taxes. So you're paying the exact amount of yes. taxes that you always yes. paid for the public schools. The yes. public schools are then closed, but then less people will be there. Correct. So you'd think you would be able to save a little money. Yeah. But then you still got to charge them. So now, so in effect, only people with money will be able to send their kids to those schools. But I thought they're also against school choice. They're, and they're oh, also- my brain is exploding. Uh, here's the way to make sense of it. Has a government agency ever said, give me less money? Yeah. Has that ever happened no, in the history happened. of humanity? No, they run literally. I mean, people don't believe this, but yeah. most government agencies run on a thing where they have to hit their budget. Otherwise spend. their budget gets cut. Nobody could run a business like that. I can't right. run my business like that where I'm like, I have to spend every freaking cent that I have. Yeah. Otherwise I'm not going to magically get, well, because I'm not given money, I have to earn money. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, so what I do is I save a certain amount in my business each year so we can continue to grow yeah. or we might have some problems and then we can figure out. That's, t that's completely foreign. Yeah. That's completely foreign to a government. An economic agent. genius over here. I know you are. And you know, actually speaking of kind of naughty words going blue. Yeah. I have to read you. There is a song that is, I'll just I'll pull up the lyrics. bust right. out your glasses like a I wish, excuse me, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. Now that we're going blue. So there's a new song that's taken over the world. The, and, and when I say taken over the world, I mean like this is the story. Okay. This, this, is, this, like, was, this, this is like this the story. Is yeah. Right. So I don't even know, you know, I don't go blue on my show. Yeah. I don't no, no, do you're it. A respectable I'm very guy. clean, clean cut. I don't wear socks in my loafers. You know, I try to be, very, I can't say the name of this, of this song without going blue. Would it be better? And it, you're hosting right now. So I want you to do what you think is right. Would it be better if, if I just read it straight? Up? I, I would feel much better if you, so the song is called WAP. Okay. WAP. Okay. WAP, it's, by, it's by Cardi. Yeah. W A P. Okay. It's by Cardi B. And this song, I mean, this is like at the, now the, the anthem, the feminist anthem. Right. And Cardi anthem. B, I'm not totally her, sh sure who she is, but I know she was like fighting with people right before I went. Yes. On she, she supported Bernie Sanders. And oh, she's right, been right. Pretty she's outspoken. got long nails, I think. He, she, and I think that's racist for you to say that, but yeah. yes, she does have long yeah. nails. So here's so the, this is uh, this song's just taken over. Everyone's this is everyone's taken over. So I'll just I guess I'll just read a little. Yeah. Bit. Whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Hole up. I said certified freak seven days a week. Wet ass pussy make that pull out game weak. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Woo ah. And then the chorus. Yeah 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 yeah. You fucking with some sweet ass pussy. Bring a bucket and mop for this pussy. Mop for this? Oh, bring a bucket and like mop, mop for it. this wet yeah. pussy. You got to yes. mop up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, give me everything you got for this wet ass pussy. Uh, I'm going to not do the next paragraph because that's where they'll come for me. Yeah, this is the... <laughs> so So where does she get her mop? That's yeah, you can't. Name. That's got some words that you're yeah. not allowed to, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that song... I mean, she's making a point. It's not... She's it's, making... It's not without merit. No, it's not. It actually... I, the, the song actually does have a point. The thesis of the song is that all 
women are prostitutes. That's actually the thesis. She says, yeah, I got my man by, and she describes sexual acts that I know, look, we're young hip millennials. Okay. We've yeah. done also like that. You've never thought of, I mean, in this kind of, it's, I didn't know that pornography. It's having a slot bucket when you're, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's your, like great. Just that image. And yeah. it only, I didn't know that, that audio could be pornographic. I thought oh, pornography yeah. is only visual. Yeah. So she's saying that these things are good. Like this is how you attain power in essence. It's not. Yes. It's right. not. She's not. Which is so the, re it. It, it, it's so the reverse actually of what, what at least first wave feminism was all yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it, it's funny because it's such a ridiculous song, but it is a commentary oh, yeah. on our WAP. WAP. I see. And it, then it hits you. Like it took me like a day to, I thought, oh, as I'm pondering this deep song of great singing. Yeah. And, but that's it. That, and the, so to say that calling women prostitutes and having them sell themselves is empowering is, is obviously a complete reversal of reality. Like you say, reality is yeah. on trial. It's emblematic to me of everything that's going on. Another example, do you know Bella Thorne? Have you ever heard of Bella Thorne? Mm. She's some movie star. She was, she was a TV star or something like that. Okay. What was she in? Do I, uh, she, I don't know, some okay. like, it wasn't Gone with the Wind, I'll tell you okay. that. It wasn't The Godfather. Okay. Bella Thorne goes on OnlyFans.com. OnlyFans.com is this way to democratize porn. Yeah. Anyone can go on it. And she does it and she sells nude photos. Some hacker hacks into her stuff, takes the nude photo. She says, well, I'm going to just sell it. $200 a pop. $200 a pop for a nude photo on the internet. That's outrageous. She makes a million bucks in the first day, two million bucks within the week. But I guess the photos were not sufficiently nude. So then the customers were demanding a refund from OnlyFans. It became a big hilarious. issue. So yeah. then OnlyFans.com. So they don't know what they're buying. No, they, they don't buying. know. They knew it was a nude photo, but they right. know it's all blurry oh, or something. Oh. And so they get the photos. They, want, they demand the refund. They didn't see the WAP. They didn't, they didn't get the WAP. There Cardi B no would WAP. be very dismayed. Yeah. And so now OnlyFans is in the whole problem. They, they make a cap. It's only $50 now per nude photo. A and now the prostitutes on OnlyFans are very upset. Because they previously were able to get a lot of money for their photos. And they'll so, show the WAP. Because they'll show the WAP and right. they figure I get 300, 400, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know what they charge. Yeah. Bella Thorne issues an apology to the pornographers and the prostitutes because she drove down their business. And it just occurred to me, every single person in this situation did the wrong thing. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Every <laughs> when everyone can screw up something so perfectly, it's yes. actually kind of miraculous. Yeah. So she, because she didn't show in effect the, the WAP, the WAP. <laughs> apologizes to the people who show the WAP, OnlyFans drops the price, the mm -hmm. cap, yeah. so that she, so that basically she can't blow the, those guys out of the water, so to speak. As it were. And now, yeah. <laughs> well, this is. This. Yeah, I'm, I think we're mixing metaphors, but yeah. they are creating a lot of images. Yes. And lest you think that a movie star who's already a millionaire, going on and trying to make another quick couple million by becoming a, a pornographic actress. Yeah. Unless, unless you think the WAP, unless you think all of that is the bottom of our sexual decay. Yeah. What's the last sexual taboo in the world, at least in our country? What's the last taboo you, shouldn't, you can do? You shouldn't bang a goat. You should, are you sure? How dare you? Yeah. How dare you, you shouldn't judge bang a goat. for it? I don't want to, I'm not holier than thou, but no. <laughs> don't bang a goat. Look at me, I'm no Bible thumper, yeah. but yeah, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would seem to me, I mean, maybe the goat thing is still a little taboo. Yeah. The last thing is kids, right? Yeah, obviously. Kids is like, yeah, yeah. you can't, even the, the most insane leftists, again, I would think even the most insane leftists say kids are off limits. Ugh, wherever this is going, wherever we're going right now. Netflix. I'm not talking about some crazy website in the depths of the internet. I'm not, I'm not talking about Jeffrey Epstein's plane. Netflix posts a movie. It's called Cuties. And the picture, the poster is of 11 year olds, preteens twerking. And here's the description. Amy, 11, becomes fascinated with a twerking dance crew. Hoping to join them, she starts to explore her femininity, defying her family's traditions. I'm guessing her family is a Christian family. Muslim. Muslim, that's interesting. Muslim, which kind of interesting. It's a French movie. Ah, okay. Because there would, are no Christians left in France. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. It's only, and, The only religious people are the Muslims. Yeah, that would not have come out of, of America. Um, you know, the, the positive thing here is yeah. there was blowback. They said, you know, twerking 11-year-olds is a little too far. Mm -hmm. But the fact that that could make it onto Netflix, 
with that poster, with that description? How did we get here? It's not even goats. If, if, I, if, yeah. if you had told me the goat thing, I'd say, oh, that's wholesome now compared yeah. to cuties. And I'm pretty sure, uh, didn't Rob Schneider bang a goat in an Adam Sandler movie? I, that would make sense. Yeah. I, think, hopefully, I, I hope it was I, in a movie. I think, I think it was a movie. Maybe. Yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a movie. These Hollywood parties. Well, I, don't know, I saw them in Bel Air. I, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing surprises me. Like that. That's what I'm saying when, when I but say there's a war I, on reality. It's like, it's almost like we're getting... We're sort of in a boy who cried wolf, but it's but it's like more perverse than that because it's almost like we need more shock value every day yeah. to keep us going. And and again, that gets back to that that rat race thing. It's like there is hmm. we, we, oh, we've dumbed yeah. this all down and we've made it all so crazy that I, I was reading you know, huh. one of the things that I read over the last month. I read Common Sense by Thomas Paine yeah. and a bunch of his other writings, and it's like I, I was in the middle of one of the paragraphs. I stopped and I was like, my God. If a politician spoke like this, yeah, three sentences in a row like this, we'd be like, he must be insane. There's an insane person here because he was actually trying to talk about honest things. I mean, common sense. Right. It's right in the title. Right. Common sense. I just get, I mean, I, I'm with you in that nothing surprises me anymore. Yeah. You know, if, if, if I found, as you say, if I found out coronavirus doesn't even exist, I'd say like, huh, okay, yeah, I guess so, whatever. Yeah. But it, it just seemed to me like, Kids, you know, that I, you'd think that's off limits, but when you see the kind of craziness with shutting down the schools, shutting down, you know, the, the, all of these kind of drag nine-year-olds and whatever, all these kind of things, it has been building such that there are no more taboos, but the way you put it is so right, which is you're in that hamster wheel. You got to get a little more. You got to go a little faster. You've got to get more, uh, insanity. Yeah. Well, it's like, when I say it's a reality war, it's like a thought war, sort of. So it's huh. like, I was even, I tweeted out that we're doing this right now, but I haven't yeah. looked at Twitter yet. I haven't looked at my feed, obviously, and I haven't looked at my mentions. But if you think about what Twitter is, which drives so much of this, right? Yeah, yeah. This thing that we're talking about. Twitter is just people having thoughts all day long. And the second they have thought, thought, it's, thought, it's thought, 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 yeah, thought yeah. and you're banging these thoughts all around all day long. Yeah. And someone across the world who you've never heard of could say, have a thought that has no value in any way, but could somehow trigger you into launching an attack on them. And then next thing you know, there's a problem at the yeah. embassy and some, you're like, yeah. we're in mm -hmm. a, it is the matrix. We're, we're right. in it now, man. We're there. That it's so, it's, is so fast. And I mean, do you, I kind of was at least hoping on this, everything's moving too quickly, that the lockdowns would slow things down a little bit. No, but it's exacerbated it. It's exacerbated. Because it, we already had a, pro we had a problem with big tech. We had a problem yeah. with information. We had a problem with truth. Um, and then what did we do? We said, oh, the vehicles that you get all this information, they're going to become exponentially more important to you. Meaning you don't go to a bar anymore to meet a stranger to talk about things. Yeah. You only will do it online. Yeah. And then we haven't even talked about this at all, but I assume uh, nobody's censoring anyone on the internet anymore. Oh, that no. must have been not solved, at all. Right? No, that's over. That must have been, oh, no, you, you said, did we'll tell, give you a win. You did tell me earlier that uh, you can't say certain things on Twitter. And, you you know, can't, I mean, well, yeah. I'll give you I'll give you a great example of one. I mean, uh, a lot of it's COVID related. Yeah. I mean, I've had I've had my show taken down. Parts of it have been taken down. No, you're I say, you know, dangerous guy. I'm a dangerous guy. I'm very intimidating, as your you can tell. bucket and but, whatever else you've got over there. <laughs> I'm carrying my mop. I'm yeah. going to get you. Uh, so there was a study that just came out of Revolver just yesterday, actually. So yeah. you just this missed is breaking this. news. This is breaking news. Yeah. It was an academic study that uh, ascertained how many lives were saved by the lockdown and how many lives were cost by the lockdown. And, it, and the way they measured it was human life years. So a year, a year of human life for anybody, right? Mm -hmm. It could be for, you know, for grandma or for the kid or whoever. So the good news is that the lockdown saved a quarter to three quarters of a million human life years, right? The bad news is the lockdown itself caused 10 times as much in terms of human life years. Meaning, the, meaning because people are drinking more and, and drinking drug overdoses, Depression, uh, probably death suicide, of despair, suicide, suicide, yeah. suicide, all these sorts of things. The lockdown, according to this study, academic study, is 10 times deadlier than the virus. I think you and I were floating that idea two months ago. Yeah. Well, you know, that 
crazy guy who works in this building, that yeah. Shapiro guy, yeah, yeah. what did he trend on Twitter for a little bit before I went off? When he said what we all know to be true, which is what actuaries do every day by you know guarding risk versus reward in essence, that yeah. we are going, as a society, we are going to have to decide what amount of people being sick or what amount of people dying is acceptable. Not We right. don't want it, yeah, yeah. but it's the simple truth to what is acceptable for us to then continue with human society as it has always continued. Well, it's a First, question of risk, right? It's okay. just risk. That's all it is. He wasn't. He wasn't. Um, he actually mentioned it on my show. I was doing a live stream with him, and that's and then it was it was the yeah it was the number one trend on on Twitter that day. But all these people were saying, "See, Shapiro wants all these people to die, and he's going to kill Grandma and all this stuff." And it's like, no, that's just what insurance companies do. You know, yeah. you pay a certain amount in, and their hope is that you're going to pay more in than you're going to take out if right. you get really sick. I mean, these are just obvious realities. Yeah. But now, even to say those. Those obvious realities, we, we can't say those realities because if you even say that, they'll say you want to kill grandma, even yeah. though we all we all know it's true. Well, the, you you have to have some risk in society, right? What are we going to do next flu season? Right. Flu season's coming up, right? What are, what are we going to do then? You, you remember 50? Why aren't, we all, why aren't we all in the streets going crazy? I mean, that when I tell yes, you that- The streets are already full. Oh, the other the guy's street, going yeah. crazy. <laughs> We are all there. Yeah. yeah, sorry. We are in the streets going crazy, but I guess for something else. Yeah. But like this idea that- I, I just because I moved, I was walking around the neighborhood and there's some nice restaurants that are there that I had never seen before. And, and I'm looking and they're all closed. Yeah. And it's like that we've taken away. It's not just that you can't go to a restaurant. It's that somebody started that restaurant. There was a little Italian trattoria by yeah. me. And I walked by, it looked so nice inside. Like I had a little bar that you'd go to just have a glass of wine and, and uh, like just some fun old Italian posters and things. And I was like, this is the type of place I would love to walk to and and be fun. And it's like, somebody built that place. Yeah, That was somebody's life. That was yeah. somebody's livelihood, probably their family, all those things. We've just ripped that away from people. And I'm not saying, yeah. again, that I'm not saying it's a hoax, but the, the cost on the other side yeah. is like, why are we afraid to talk about that? Why are we afraid to push back and say, sorry, Gavin Newsom or whoever, or Andrew Cuomo or whoever, you don't get to decide whether I'm going to have a life that has purpose or not. Yeah, well, yet, you, we, yet we seem to be. And speaking of Cuomo, so Cuomo uh, implemented, I actually don't know, I don't know if he implemented it before you left, but he certainly uh, maintained it, oh, which is the, the quarantine. Yeah. Oh, I thought so, you were going to say, remember when he did the thing, which was right before I went off, where you could be at a bar, but then certain, but wings don't count as yeah. food. <laughs> Because you have to order food at a bar, and then people started ordering wings to get away with it. Yeah, but wings. And then that's he decided not, wings isn't no. a meal. Wings are a meal. Wings are totally a meal. Wings are a meal. Like, of course, they're what does he want me to eat? Yeah. I've got to eat zucchini sticks or something. What is yeah. this? It's like Michelle Obama over here. But like they say that, but that even that type of thing, it's like a, a politician announces that wings aren't a meal. Literally, this yeah. is not a. We're not making yes. this up. He because literally of the said that buffalo wings are not a yeah. meal, and we just accept that. Okay, now I can't go to a bar and have wings because they can't. But a sandwich which is a meal or something. And it's yeah. like, what does that have to do with you being governor? Yeah. What, what are you governing over? Well, this, this issue of you know, Cuomo said it from oh, beginning, wings. we're going to, we're going to follow the science. We're going to follow the data and the yeah. science. And so as a result of this, he said that if you traveled in to New York from terrible places like California, you'd have to quarantine for two weeks. So if we were to go to New if York, if we were to go to New York, York we'd have to quarantine. quarantine. Obviously no one is doing this, yeah. but they are, they are handing out fines. If you, if you violate it. Are they really? Is. Yeah. So that's, so that's, that's insane. China level stuff. So okay. China, and it's just a cash grab and a power grab. So they, and then the CDC, which is our public health administration governing body, they take away this guideline. They say, okay, it is no longer advised that you need to have this quarantine. So Cuomo takes away the quarantine, right? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. He says, absolutely not. I'm going to defer to the science. He said, well, hold on. The CDC, they're the, aren't they the scientists and you're just this like bulldog faced uh, governor of New York? And he says, no, that science has been politicized. So now the left is complaining about politicized science. Nothing is true. Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing matters. No matter what, th this is one of the things, this is wh where we've talked about this many times. What my frustrations are with my last remaining liberal friends is they seem to think that there will be some point Yeah that it will get so nutty with the left that at some point logic and reason will be forced to be accepted. Yeah. 
But that is the reverse of how this thing will work. Every time they're proven wrong about something, they double down in it more because it proves to them that the system is evil. Huh. You, you understand? Like right, every, right. instead of it, when, like for example, so Trump became president. Trump in a sane world would probably not be president. But you would think that the lefties would have been like, man, maybe we really did screw some things yeah, up. Maybe we should think about ourselves. And, right, and think about, and, and that's, by the way, I was doing a million videos about that because I was considered myself a lefty at the time and going, guys, we should yeah. rethink this as lefties. What are we doing? and return to the roots of liberalism. But what I found was yeah. all they wanted to do, it was proof that they were right. The loss was proof that they were right. So everything right. forces them to double down into their own bullshit or yeah. crapulence, as Mr. Burns might say. <laughs> yeah. Everything for, everything is a proof, a further proof of their yeah. theory as right. opposed to, oh, what would, a, what would a rational person do or a businessman do or someone that has to be functional in society? You keep doing things that screw up, you might go, oh, maybe I am doing something wrong, but they actually operate on the reverse thesis. This is a problem. The, well, and this is also, it gets to what Andy Cuomo means by science. I like that you call him Andy. Andy, Anyone that's else what, call him we Andy? New Yorkers, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I've, I've met Andrew Cuomo on two occasions. I was once his waiter, and on the other time he caught me outside smoking a cigar and drinking a beer during Hurricane Sandy. It's a true story. He caught you? He, he personally caught me. And what did he do? He yelled out as, we were, as, my, as my drunken friends who had been drinking beers while the storm raged. Uh, we went outside, had a cigar. I said, I, want, I need a cigar. It's, been, it's been a hurricane. We go outside and a Andrew Cuomo, I, we call him Andy, his friends, uh, we hear, what the hell are you kids doing? And we say, oh, we're out for a walk. He goes, not a good night for that. And we turn around and it's Andy Cuomo with two cops, one cop on either side, and it was like getting caught by teacher. Because you're like, ah, oh, shit, yeah. is, no, I don't think this is legal. I don't think we're not supposed to be doing this. Yeah. And uh, luckily he had other, other things to tend to, so he didn't, didn't arrest us or anything like that. He didn't throw you in the slammer. He didn't throw us in the slammer. But Cuomo actually makes a little bit of sense when he says, oh, I'm following the science. Because what the left means by science is not looking under a microscope and discovering stuff about viruses. What they mean is the same thing Karl Marx meant, and Hegel, and all these kind of thinkers that have come in their wake, Will, Woodrow Wilson, which is the science of history. It's like Obama. Yes. So he talks about the right side of history, right? That they believe that, that they have found scientific precision in history. They know the end of history. And so whatever they want to do is the scientific thing to do. And whenever they lose an election, by the way, it is by definition illegitimate. Because you're, they're not supposed to lose elections. That's, I mean, that, what did people think was going to happen when a bunch of us were like, hey, you know, if you, if you have a penis, you're a male. And they said, you're a bigot or you're, dare you. or, or, I don't know what the hell they said. Yeah. But, but they were all making it sound like, oh, it's just a bunch of us crazy people on YouTube saying that this stuff matters yeah. when they go for this. And yet now we're seeing it. Yeah. Now we're seeing it. Oh, well, if that doesn't matter. By the way, wasn't there, isn't there some law being passed? Someone passingly mentioned this to me. So I sense something yeah. might be happening in California now where they're actually trying to institute racial quotas at companies or something like that. So, oh, it, it's so much yeah, worse. Yeah. So that. someone sort of said so something you, to me and then I was like, you got to stop. So th but this is so much worse than that. Before you even tell me, I just want to be very clear yeah. on this one. I will never hire someone based on the color of their skin or their sexuality or their gender. Oh, so you're a bigot. Call me a racist. So you're a bigot. Call me yeah. a bigot. Call me yeah, a yeah. homophobe. Call me a Nazi. Yeah. But I, I won't. I, and I really mean that. I will never. I have two companies. I will never hire someone you're based on any You're of those. telling me that you won't judge someone based on the color of their skin rather than the content of their character? I won't know. I don't care wow. what the threat is. That's... Like so I put ice in my mouth for that too. To, so that's very the, dramatic. The lawyers come. That was yeah. That's oh, he was mumbling. Yeah, I couldn't know. What did he quite say? Yeah. So it's it's so much worse than that in California. Okay. And I know you just got a house in California. You might you want to. So let me just address this real quick. I did decide to stay. Um, yeah. I was thinking about leaving. You and I actually we had several dinners where we yes. we both discussed it. Um, Make I decided to stay, tr and and it was in. There were several things. Career-wise and everything else happening, but what I really thought, what it really boiled down to more than anything else, more than the weather yeah. or any of that stuff, was that if someone like me yeah. cannot live here, cannot live in California, yeah. like like it's become so extreme that someone like me can't live there, then the American experiment, the union, the states, the the, the whole federal project, then it really is over. And then really what we're saying is, okay, we're at civil war. Like the states really are going to just fray. And if you believe this, you'll live here. And if you believe this, you'll live here. I, I'm not willing to give that up yet. And I will uh, tell you one other thing, which is that during all this, I watched on Netflix, 
while I was uh, off the grid, I watched this two-part documentary on Netflix. It wasn't Cutie Pie or whatever that was. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, a Frank Sinatra documentary, two mm. two-hour episodes. It was phenomenal, and I, I yeah, love the yeah. old crooners and all that. Yeah, I'm a huge And one of the interesting things about Sinatra that you forget about because of the voice and because of the Rat Pack and, yeah. and all that stuff is that he was a huge Democrat for a long time, fundraiser, campaigned for Democrats. He's friends with JFK, he was friends wasn't with he? JFK. Yeah. They really go into that. And one of the things that happened to Frank Sinatra was Frank Sinatra, because he was also a Californian, became a Californian Republican for Ronald Reagan. Yeah. And then the media started going after him. And a lot of the documentaries about this, how awful the media was. And he, he has some great quotes about the media that you're like, holy shit, the guy was saying this 40 years ago about how evil they are and they just want to destroy people and all this stuff. But he has a great line that almost, it's almost a quote of himself from, uh, from My Way, yeah. the song My Way, where he's like, every man has a duty to yeah. vote the way their conscience falls, vote for who they believe in, and, and you have a right and a duty to do that as an American. And it's like, that sounds like a brave thing to say now, um, and I suppose it was a brave thing to say then, but of course you have that right yeah. and duty. Why am I even telling you all this? Well, how is this, oh, because of the Because uh, of the California, quotas. because yeah, you, California. I think you've made a good, a good argument to stay in California, but you haven't seen what's been coming up in the California legislature. You. A uh, business owner? Am I going to have to fire myself? Is that you are going? definitely going to have to fire yourself. Yeah. So, obviously, everyone's going to have to have a slop bucket for the pussy or something. They're, <laughs> they're going to need to have. They're going to need. It's not a, a slop bucket so much as a, a collection bucket that's going to come around. Now they're going to raise your taxes. We all knew that, right? You can't you can't shut down the state, the fifth largest economy in the world, for for however long, and not have anybody pay for that. They're also talking about a wealth tax. And there's a, some people, you know, they just hear tax and it's all the, we're not talking about taxes on your income. We're talking about taxes on the, not only the money that you already have, but the assets that you already yeah. have. Let's say you have a house, house is a half a million dollars. They can come in and say, well, you're worth half a million dollars. We want a piece of that. So write me a check for 50 grand, but you don't have 50 grand. You've right. just got, you whatever, got, a you got a house or you got a car or yeah. whatever. That's what's being floated right now. And I'll do you one better. It's not just on the money you've got. It's, if you leave California, they could hit you with this for up to 10 years, for up to 10 years. So you leave the bananas-ness, uh -huh. you go to, let's say, Texas, no state income tax. Yeah. Then they can, for 10 years, go after whatever, I assume, the, oh, it's the assets, I guess, that you had? The, yeah. Ugh. So this is being, this yeah. is what's being discussed right now. Obviously, nothing's been finalized yet. But when I look at that, bananas is an apt word because that is some banana republic stuff. I mean, that's yeah. the stuff they do in Venezuela. But now you're seeing it in California, in the United States, and it's supposedly the civilized state, the giant economy. So I got stuff to do. You got, I got stuff to I, do. I got stuff to do by staying. I mean, I, I really, yeah. I'm not just saying that to be glib or to sound like I'm uh, doing something noble or something, but yeah. like this stuff needs to end. These yeah. horrible ideas need to end. Because think about it, if everyone else moves, if all the good people move, imagine if we end up in that situation. You think it's polarized now? Yeah. What happens when California fully goes bankrupt yeah. and then the feds are under pressure? The fed is now under pressure to bail it out. Every single person in Texas who lived in, within their means is gonna wanna kill people from California. And you oh, wouldn't yeah. even have, you wouldn't be able to blame them. So we, we have to fix some of this from the inside. Ronald Reagan was governor of California before he was president. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a Republican governor of California not that long ago. Yeah. Like maybe some of this stuff can get fixed and I'm, I'm gonna freaking try to fix some of it. Or, you know, uh, you'll die trying because th because there is this real worry. I mean, when or you, you have a bunker. I've got a bunker, yeah, you yeah. can come downstairs. I mean, yeah. There is this worry that before you left, you know, people are talking about, oh, I hope these riots finally abate. I mean, they've been going on for months now, yeah. but they, they've only gotten worse. Yeah. And I mean, we mentioned a little bit earlier this case of a Kyle Rittenhouse, this guy who defended himself with the gun, oh, okay. and now they're saying it's open warfare. The president's defending him. But, uh, you know, up until now, it's really only been left-wing violence, and now you've got a, a right-winger defending himself against the left-wing violence, and it's not just people getting knocked out. This does kind of remind you a little bit of the 1850s, right? I mean, whenever people have brought up civil war, I've just mm. thought, no, it's not gonna happen. But if even in the month you've been gone, things have gotten so much worse. There have been videos that have come out in just the past week or so of, uh, of people posting, they say, white lives don't matter. And it's a young black guy goes up to a middle-aged white guy, knocks him in the head with a brick. 
There was a story that just came out a couple of days ago. Uh, a black uh, customer at AutoZone goes up to the middle-aged white employee, just stabs him, starts stabbing him. And when he was asked, why did he do it? He said, I watched a, d a bunch of videos on the internet of police brutality, and I felt I had to go out there and kill a white guy. But I thought YouTube radicalizes everyone to the alt-right. Oh, uh, huh, that doesn't... that what the New York Times said with my picture on the... That's right. You are the gateway to the alt-right. Yeah. Right? You're the gate to your neo-Nazi white supremacist. But actually, we now have firm evidence of all of these social media platforms radicalizing people toward the left, toward racial division, toward racial hatred. How do you come back from there? It, yeah, you know, well, that, that's what we have to do. But you bring up the big tech issue. That's the issue, right? Because yeah. it's, it's not just the Democrats egging people on. It's not just Antifa or BLM. It's, it's not just technology. It's not just the universities. It's all of it working together. What do we do now? Well, you're asking me the big one, Knowles. <laughs> that's the big one. Well, I want to know. What You've been going do? for a what month. We, I haven't yeah. talked to you. Well, what do we do? I mean, I think the only thing you can do is is try to be a little better than them incrementally and mm. as you are mm. i think most people aren't horrible people i don't think most yeah. people want the world to burn i don't think most people want to control everybody i don't think most people want to take from you and and give to someone else i think all of these bad ideas have have manifested themselves and and um bubbled up because good people are just afraid to say what they think yeah and i mean i I literally wrote a book about it. Like yeah. you gotta, you gotta be more brave. You can't leave it up to, you know, that crazy Michael Knowles yeah. and Dave Rubin to yeah. to do it. You got to do it in your own life and start fighting for what you believe in. Like it's, who, what's the quote? It's only a country if you have it or save right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that? the, the, me, link, the Franklin quote is. Yeah. Great. Give me something. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. Uh, a republic if you can keep it. Yeah. But can you We're keep there. it? Is the question. Actually, me, speaking of the book, I was wondering yeah. this. If you're not in the news, I mean, my nose is buried in it all day. You say yeah. that your phone is not by your bed and that mine is. It's the first yeah. thing I look at. It's the last thing I have look I at. Have I taught you nothing here today? I know. I, Tonight, maybe, don't I, sleep with your phone. I, I have day. to. I've yeah. got to lock it away in a safe, hopefully forever, you know. What did you do? What do you do with all that time? Liter well, so we moved, which obviously. obviously say, and we rebuilt time. my studio, which will debut tomorrow. And that yeah. was a ton of, there's just like stuff. Yeah. Just stuff and bringing in lighting people and tech people and doing all that kind of stuff. So there was that. Yeah. Um, but I was really aware of just trying to like, just sort of trying to be. Yeah. I mean, I got up every morning. I did the same thing. Every single morning I have coffee before I, I usually pee. Then I have yeah. some coffee. Um, and then I did about an hour of cardio every single day watching my old basketball games. And there was no racial yeah. problems or anything. It was just about basketball. Weird. Sports being about sports. Very it's bizarre. so odd. Um, I take my, take my dog for a lot of long walks. Yeah. Uh, you've met Clyde. He's a little yeah, bananas. He's, 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 got little... Some, he's got some boxer in him. So he needs yes. to, he really needs long walks. So long walks. Um, we ate really well, like we yeah. cooked. I didn't eat out even once. I, we ordered in maybe, I can't even remember ordering in, but maybe, oh, we ordered in sushi once, but like yeah. we cooked a lot and I grilled a lot. And like that was, you know, I did some reading and um, I played some basketball and that really was it. I didn't do that much and I was really yeah. okay not doing that. Because you do wonder, I mean, you think even, that's just for adults, right? Adults are going crazy if they stay locked in and they, you know, you got to do that. You got to play basketball. Yeah. You got to be able to talk to people. You got but now it's on the kids too. Yeah. So, you know, kids hadn't been wearing the stupid masks and now uh, Eric Swalwell, nearly the president, Ugh, you know, he was so close. That guy, Eric Swalwell, who is you and me and all of us, I believe that's yeah. the campaign motto. <laughs> yeah. Eric Swalwell tweets out an image of little kids in masks. He says, you've got to do this for your, think, what are, what are, what are you telling? Yeah. What are you telling these kids that is a three or five year olds, all of a sudden you've got to put on masks. One new thing they're doing is they put them in bubbles. It's literally bubble boy. They put them in this, this weird contraption, which is so odd because it's, it's, you know, plastic all around, but it's open at the top, but the kids are like three feet tall. So it, if the spittle is going anywhere, it's going to go right down into the contraption. See, anyway. the, see, the problem with discussing this is I know already there's some idiot at Media Matters or somewhere that's going to clip this and say, yeah. okay, so here's Ruben and, and Knowles denying coronavirus. Yeah. We're not. We're not. What we're talking about is what is it that you do in the long-term health of a society right. when you just train everyone to behave a certain way and do all of these things that 
for as much as we can tell, aren't necessarily scientifically proven, whether you have a box on someone's head yeah, with an I opening mean, up here, but that you just train children to just follow orders like yeah. robots and all of these things. I'm much more interested in that discussion than whatever like the the political machination of the day is, but but there's a certain set of people out there that are making it, that it is their job and they are well-funded often yeah. to, to try to make sure we can't have those conversations. So you'll just keep accepting it. Yeah. They'll keep feeding you crap and you'll keep eating crap because you'll forget. That's what I meant before about how February seems so long ago to us. It's like, it really does. Yeah. Try to remember February. Everything was pretty good. Yeah. And we're forgetting that things were pretty good. There was impeachment in January. Remember impeachment? Remember impeachment? Yes. Yeah. Like so I, I long he, for the days. So we didn't. There's no impeachment happening right now. There's or? not yet. I'll wait until he gets reelected. Yeah. Then, yeah. then you then could see it. I, it's funny with, when, when we're talking about the bubble boy and the boxes and the whatever. I, I'm reminded of this this old left wing thinker in the early part of the 20th century. This guy Wilhelm Reich. He was a psychologist, scientist, and he developed this theory that the whole life energy of the universe was was something called an orgone that related to your orgastic potency. You want to talk about the WAP. And basically that ah. all the problems in society, war, poverty, cancer, everything, was caused by a lack of orgasms. And this is what he believed. And he developed a box called the Orgone Accumulator, which was later parodied as the Orgasmatron. By yeah, well, it, it sounds like he's going to need the, That's the what bucket. You need it. <laughs> You, this this was an actual popular thing. Norman Mailer had the org orgasmatron, the organ Wait, accumulator. Meaning you 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 got in a box. I I don't know what went on in the box. What I do you do? Oh, wait, you, know, you get you you get you go in the, the box. box you go the box, in the box. You... No, you go in the box, and then what you do in the box is your business. Okay, yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make any judgments. This was a popular scientific idea. And when I look at the ridiculous yeah. bubble yeah, boy, yeah, yeah. when like, I look at all these things, yeah. I just think like people are going to be making fun of this in 50 years. But as of right now, it's very serious science. We've all got to take it super duper seriously. Do you think we got to shake people out of the science thing? I mean, you know, now Media Matters headline is going to be Ruben and Knowles, they're against science. They're against the box. They're against the box, yeah. the orgasmatron. I don't know. Um, well, I don't think we have to shake people out of science. I think we have to shake people into sense. That, that really is it. That is yeah. it. Common sense yeah. and and living within your means and being a decent person and all of the things that we all know are obviously true and yet we we somehow i don't know we're i can see it very clearly now after not being in it and yeah. and i'm really going to try to I, i've tried for the last while anyway yeah. but i'm going to really try to to help people make some sense out of this thing because it's the people that think it's just gonna it's either they i think some people think it's either going to stop yeah. Or, or that it will reset itself, or somehow that this this messed up thing we're in right now, it can't be like it can't last forever. Yeah. Well, I agree, it can't last forever, but it could it could last for decades. Right. You know what I mean? Like nothing lasts forever. The yeah. the, the greatest joys and freedoms don't last forever, and and the greatest tyrannies and atrocities don't last forever. Yeah. So whatever it is we're in right now, which is neither one of those, by the way, it's somewhere much more in between. Yeah. Um, it won't last forever, but you might be an agent that could help fix it. Yeah. You might be, there's only one way to find out. And there's, you know, even things that you think will remain on top and totally successful forever. I think of New York City, Manhattan Island. Well, here's a new story. Is New York still a city, by the N way? No, it's not. I mean, it's, it's not still a city. The city is completely shut down. It's empty. And this is a new story that you might've seen a little bit could, just because you were moving. The lined to get U-Hauls in Manhattan around the block completely people are fleeing, fleeing from the city and are they going to are they going to go back when are they going to go back the greatest city in the history of the world yes the cent the, the center of the universe the center of the universe uh, i've mentioned this on the show a couple times before when i had giuliani on i mentioned it to him yeah but there have been my family has had uh at times dozens something like 60 or 70 Reuben family members extended on either side yeah. living in new york city um since around 1908 something like that yeah. Uh, there's one person left. One, one left. person left. My sister and her husband and two kids left in the middle of the pandemic. That took four people out, and now and then one cousin died in the midst of the pandemic, and then I got one cousin left in there. That's just indicative of what's happening. What? Because what can you do? I mean, they can only push you so far. I, I appreciate that you're making the stand to save California. I, I I hope we can save it. You know, but you can only push people so far, and they're gonna 
they're going to react to that. Yeah. All these businesses, there's an estimated 60% of American restaurants going to go out of business. They're still not reopened. So I think one of the ways that we get out of this is that something will happen, and I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I could see yeah. it having to be a horrific thing, like some sort of terrorist attack or something horrible, but maybe there's a better way that, hmm. like it won't be the yeah. ultimate horror that will, will shake us out of this. Something shakes us out of this, and then we could end, we could enter like a roaring 20s situation where everyone will want to be out and about again. They'll want to spend money again. They'll yeah. want to be like sort of the better versions of themselves again. And we'll get over the fear and the hate and yeah. all that stuff. I don't know what it takes to get there. And there's going to be the forces that would rather that not happen are probably far stronger than the forces that can make that happen. Yeah. Um, but that, that's one sort of distant star to look at, I suppose. And there, there is this question, uh, there have been all these kind of crazy foreign stories. People haven't paid a ton of attention to them, but uh, one, I guess this isn't even a news. We really headline. glossed over that piece in the Middle East thing. That was, uh, yeah, that, that, you know, that was, a, yeah. that was a pretty big story, you yeah. know, but obviously it's too nice to Trump, so the media's got to yeah, kill yeah. that. But another one, you know, in terms of threats, Kim Jong-un is- Is he back? Didn't like, he, CNN like, said he died? Like maybe then... we don't, he's now maybe in a coma. Again, remember he was maybe in a coma before he left and yeah. now he's maybe in a coma again. So we just don't know. That's a very volatile situation. China has been aggressing in India, in Taiwan, in Vietnam, over in Japan. It's been aggressing all over the place on American interests. Right now, let's say that China invades. They're not gonna invade mainland America, but they invade some American interest. While we're busy burning down our country, is there is there any way we could fight a, a war with China? Well, first off, we don't want to fight a war with China. Yeah. That, that, that's number one. Um, well, that sort of gets to what I was saying about like, how do we get out of this sort of thing? Yeah. Like, like do, would it take something horrible? Yeah. Like, does it take like a Pearl Harbor or something so terrible to just like, for us to like turn and look at the person who maybe is our ideological opponent yeah. and say, you're a human. Now, what I can say is that generally speaking, in the last two years or so, I have found that people on the right are are almost always almost without exclusion willing to do that of course willing to of give course, those yeah. guys the benefit of the doubt right what i've seen on the left is almost no willingness to do it and not only that but if you see someone else on the left that's willing to do it you go and destroy them um one of the things that i right before i went off was um that guy matt taibbi who's a yeah, journalist yeah. lefty lifelong lefty journalist yeah. who suddenly is saying you know something's wrong with the left guys and i'm like yeah, yeah. hey hey remember me hi i'm dave rubin hi hey, yeah hey, yeah hey. yeah um, but now what I remember from just the day or two before I went was where there were all these lefties going, oh, now he's in it for that Coke money and the big right wing money and yeah, the, yeah. and the sell and, and the big Knowles like, money. Yeah. 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 And it's like, come on, man. Like this, every time someone says there's something wrong here, yeah. you, if you go to destroy them, well then what you will be left with is something that is very sick and twisted and evil. And, and I think that that's what they have on their hands at the moment. And the question is, do you go in and try to operate or do you just say, this thing is done? I mean, that's what I think. I think this thing is done and there are better places. If you, if you believe any of the things that I believe and if you believe in old school liberalism or you just think America is decent or any of those things, like there's a lot of br bridges to build yeah. right in this freaking building that I'm in right now. Two nights ago, if you were in the street of a big city, yes. you, you could have heard the phrase, death to America. Now, if I said you have to pick one city. Is that Biden's slogan now? That's going to be Joe, Biden Harris, death to America. <laughs> death. If, if you had to pick yeah. one city where you, you actually had to put money yeah. down on it, right? Was that being chanted in Tehran, in the, in the Middle East somewhere yeah. where they hate us? Or was that being tr tr chanted in Oakland, California? Where would you put your money on? Well, Oakland is more of a radical hotbed of cesspooly <laughs> nonsense. It is. It was in Oakland. It was yeah, Oakland. It, it was in o death to America. I just mean, look, Oakland's always been a little radical. That to me is a level that we haven't seen at least in 40, 50 years and, and maybe not ever. That you've now got an entire left, I mean, elected Democrats saying, America was never great. This is a bad country. This is a racist country. Well, was there anything uplifting at the DNC convention? Was there anything uplifting? Was there any, really, like being I'm, as objective as I'm, you could possibly, was there any moment? 
I mean, I'm guessing Biden tried to do something on the uplifting side because he can't. The no, thing is with Biden, he, no. he needs to fake it for the confused Dems. Yeah. So there must have been there must have been a little something to that, right? No, like, I mean, like here, here, this is still this is a great country because he does. Because yeah. I think that's what he believes. He said, yeah, he's going to restore yeah. the country, right? I mean, that's their version of it. But that doesn't, right but again. see, that's what we said before. It doesn't work. To say restore, the implication is, oh, that Trump is the one that screwed it up for the last three years. But their whole platform is that the whole thing has been evil yeah. for 200 years. From so what are you res restoring? That's, that sounds like make America great again. Yes. And the one thing that Biden said, the one thing that was sort of uplifting that Biden said was that uh, he's going to bring the light and not the darkness. I thought, you know, what's another word for bringer of light? Is uh, Lucifer. Uh, okay, hold on. Now, now, obviously, it's a little complicated, but yeah. that was the line. We're going to bring the light. We're going to bring the light from the darkness. But it doesn't, that was all just kind of empty words. He didn't get into anything tangible. I would, I would actually say the most uplifting part of the convention was a very dark part, which was they had this woman whose father died from coronavirus, and he liked he liked Trump, and I guess he didn't wear the mask the right way or something, and so he died, very sad, and she went on and said, Donald Trump killed my dad. And what she was really saying is, my dad is an idiot who mm -hmm. believed Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and he's, what a fool he was. He should have listened to me, because I hate Trump. And, uh, and anyway, it's Trump's fault for some reason. When, when was the last DNC where they didn't accuse the Republican of killing somebody? But also, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, right before I went off the grid, there were all the protests everywhere, and you had thousands and thousands of maskless people yeah. protesting. They didn't die, so I guess Trump didn't kill them, but he did kill... It's like... Well, you know, in, in many places, you were not allowed to ask coronavirus patients if they had participated in protests. You weren't allowed to, you that could ask if like they went to a restaurant. sounds like something a sane society would do. Yeah, uh, yeah. well, sci scientific. Sci you know, yeah, yeah. It's very well, didn't, wasn't there like a whole thing where a bunch of scientists said that racism is, is more of like a threat than yes. coronavirus or something like yeah, that? Like the, the over a thousand public health expert scientists said that white supremacy. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, white yeah. supremacy is a public health threat that exacerbates coronavirus. So actually, if you go and show up to one of these 10,000 person rallies, you're actually helping. Stop this. Break. Do you know that? The, I know you know this, but there was yeah. a period uh, about a year ago where there was like a month where like genuine like white supremacists online, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever that is. It's yeah, hard to yeah. tell if they're just trolls or whatever. Right. Um, started showing up to some like turning point events and college conservative events. And they showed <laughs> My up. Events. They showed you know, they showed up to both of our yeah, events. Yeah. They showed up to Ben's events and they showed up to Candace Owens events and a whole bunch of other stuff. And you know what happened at all those events? Oh, they showed up to Trump Jr.'s events. Yeah. yeah. You know what happened at all those events? We all shot them down. We yeah. all argued with them. Uh, some of us maybe more yeah. effectively than others, but we, but nobody acquiesced to the, to those bad ideas. No one gave an inch or gave a quarter to any of that. And yet the media, the only time the media covered it was when, uh, Trump Jr. sort of got a whole bunch of people mobbed, screaming yeah. and mobbed and, and the media, the, I, I watched the report on CNN. They didn't know what to do. Yeah. Because it was white supremacists angry at Trump right. Jr. Right. Now, this doesn't make sense. Isn't his base supposed to be these people? Yeah. So they showed it because they wanted to show a, a mob with Trump Jr. Like, that's good. Like, something bad's happening on the right. But what they didn't really show was that he was the one fighting against it. Yeah. And it's like that. We need more of that. Well, did we I, I, I guess I, I didn't tell you about one of Joe Biden's biggest new endorsements. Have I not? Let me guess. He got Farrakhan. He, he got. No. Yeah. Oh, it's better than that. It's better than Farrakhan. It's better. Give than me all. a hint. He is probably the most famous white identitarian in the country. David Duke. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Richard Spencer. Richard Spencer. Richard Spencer. And he said, by the way, <laughs> he said, he said, by the way, for you people who think I'm doing this ironically or what, I'm not. I think Joe Biden is more competent than Donald Trump. I think the Democrats are more competent than the Republicans. I am earnestly endorsing Joe Biden for president. But what's his play on the white supremacist side of it? His, I, well, I, I get it because, yeah. because identity politics is, is white yeah. supremacism. It's black yeah. supremacism. It's, it's supremacism in and of itself. Yeah. But like, I don't think he probably, he probably didn't say that. No, I don't think it's that. I think, I think there's been a big uh, disappointment among yeah. these kind of white supremacist, yeah, identitarian yeah. people because... Trump is not that, yeah. right? Trump simply is not that. And the left can shout about it as much as they want, but it just hasn't come true. And so the white identitarians are going back to their roots and re rejoining the Democratic Party, I suppose, or at least endorsing Joe Biden. I'm guessing that didn't get much coverage. Well, 
I'm trying to check. Let me see New York Times or probably made the dailywire.com. Yeah, it made, uh, yeah, it has CNN. not it has not shown up anywhere. And you know, the, the way that they dehumanize Trump is so the way that it's just any they only throw this bad stuff, they never say anything nice. So Trump's brother died during the during the virus. He was uh, I think in his 70s or something like that. Very sad, you know. Yeah, sad. I didn't even know he had a living brother. I know he, he lost another brother. He lost his alcohol. older brother Fred. Yeah. This is his younger brother Robert. They were very close. Yeah. And it's very sad. So, do you know what trended when Trump's brother died? Wish it was Trump. Wr have been wrong Trump. Trump. Right. Wrong Trump trended. And the, the headlines about it in uh, the Washington Post is, uh, was, the, the headline was about how Donald Trump's niece, not, not his brother's daughter, by the way, that's a different brother, mm. how the niece wrote this tell-all book about how terrible Trump is. You say, well, what does that niece have anything to do with the brother who died? It reminded me of, that's the treatment that the president of the United States gets. But when Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi dies. He's a uh, gentlemanly an, scholar. An austere, austere religious austere. scholar. He yes, is, yes. yeah. It's just so open, right? It's so out in the open. And uh, the, big, the big pitch from the conventions, the big pitch from the protests, protests, the big pitch from the riots, the big pitch from the people on the coronavirus lockdowns. What is it? This is the most important election in our lifetimes. And you always hear that and you say, that's a bunch of BS. This time it is. I think it is, right? We're I think pretty much there this time. Like, yeah. like, we are hinging and the entire world yeah. is now hinging on, does freedom matter? Again, this isn't like some tacit full endorsement of everything that Trump is or does or anything like it's that. It's just the tweets you're endorsing every single- I'm just every endorsing single every single yeah. tweet and every single decision he's ever made. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but besides that, yeah. The choice now we're deciding, does reality matter? Do, do facts matter? Does history matter? Does anything that we thought mattered that helped build something really great here in America for 250 years, does any of it matter? If you think that it doesn't matter, then you really should be yeah. a lefty, be a progressive, vote for these guys, destroy the whole damn thing. But it's just, the people, the very people who are destroying the thing, yeah. if they only knew how much worse it could be, hmm. if they only knew uh, what, what, I mean, and this, I, I say this all the time and I say it in my book, like they should just, they don't, you don't have to do a history lesson because I know they think history was written by the evil white supremacists. Yeah, yeah. They should just talk to their parents about what their grandparents lived through. Yeah. That's all you have to do if you're an American. If you're an American and you think it's so horrible right now, yeah. talk to your parents about, talk, uh, talk to your grandparents if they're alive, if you're really lucky, talk to your great grandparents. Yeah. Maybe talk to your parents. Yeah. And is it better or worse? And it's always better for you. It's so, always better if you're an American in 2020. Doesn't mean it's perfect, but every every story we've gone through. I mean, we've gone yeah. through probably do dozens of stories. At yeah. This point. Well, the pussy bucket is. Still and running. that's that's just <laughs> the, the, with me, you know? obviously the most important one. You yeah. you can rename it. Maybe you can write your own response well, to it. The, the, yeah, the PB. It's all about the election, right? Yeah. The riots are about the election. The lockdowns are about the election. The, the election's about the election. The mail, all this stuff. Are there enough liberals, you know, kind of yeah. open-minded liberals to be persuaded? And will the events of the past month that you have just missed out on, that I have filled you in on, are they enough to turn public opinion and get a Democrat to vote for that evil orange man, that mango Mussolini? Well, I would say, look at it slightly different, which is differently, which is if you, let's just say we repeat exactly what happened last time, right? Yeah. So you have the people who voted for Trump and the people who, who voted for Hillary. I could see a lot of people right now that are seriously frustrated with the left, yeah. kind of just holding their nose and voting for Trump, just, or, or have fully come around because I've seen plenty of those people too. Oh, yeah. um, Carlin Borsenko, who you probably know from yeah, Twitter, yeah. from the, the knitting group I've had on my show, like she's now a huge Trump supporter after being a lifelong lefty. I think there are a lot of people that are just like, the left has gone completely bananas yeah. and I either love Trump or I love what he represents or, or I'm gonna hold my nose and I'm gonna not be polled and I'm gonna secretly vote for him. Try to imagine it the other way. If you voted for Trump, yeah, and suddenly you were like, "All right, it's now three and a half years later. What is it that Trump did that would get you to that vote. would drive you to be like, "All right, I'm going to vote for the guys that are kind of endorsing burning the cities down." Yeah, 
Like I, I, that jump, I would love for someone to explain it to me if they can, but I can't, you might say, you know what? I thought Trump was gonna be more presidential in his tweets or- does Richard Sprencer thought he'd be more of a white supremacist. Right, so I guess, all right, we got one. Oh, thank you, all right, we got one. Which by the way, you know, when you said that before, remember when, uh, when Richard Spencer said he was no longer supporting Trump, which was months ago. Yeah, yeah. Didn't say he was voting for Biden yet, but, yeah. but months ago he said he was no longer supporting Trump and they announced that on The View. Joy Behar announced it on The View and the clowns in the audience, they're all applauding. And it's like, you dingbats, do you realize you're applauding a white supremacist just because he doesn't support Trump? To, like, to own the cons. You can't, yeah, enjoy no, Bayard, ah, yeah. like a seal, and then, <laughs> yay. So yeah, there's the one the example. There's the one example. So, so okay, so I can, see, I can see the leader <laughs> of the white supremacist going, I've had it with Trump, he's not good enough on the white supremacy stuff, yeah. he seems to want black people to have jobs, I'm gonna vote for Joe Biden. But I can't, where you really yeah. can see it the other way. Like this, I think that, I think I'm being as objective as possible. You could really be like, you know what? Trump's not perfect, basically likes America. Before coronavirus, the, the economy was working. Like we have a sense of what future could look like with him. Yeah. And I'm gonna just, I don't love him, but I'm gonna do it. But the other way seems, I, I can't really paint the, it short of the disgruntled huh. white supremacist. This is very interesting because what it means, you're actually giving me a little glimmer of hope here yeah. of the way that people are going to move. So you came in here today, yes. a sweet, ignorant man. You've yeah. been away uh, you know, 30 days. You know what's no funny? News. I do feel a little tightness in my chest you, right now. Yes, like, not, like, just, not like heart attack, but I do remember, uh -huh. I feel July tightness. Yes. yes. That's the, you, We're you, all walking around right back into it yeah, yeah. In, back. in a quick two hours. Yeah. But is it, I, I knew, I mean, I was sort of waiting. I said, oh, Dave, he's having a good day. I'm going to ruin his, <laughs> I'm going to ruin his whole month. <laughs> but when you get to the end of that, yeah. are you... Are you pessimistic? Are you optimistic? Are you hopeful? Where, where do you stand? Well, I'm the same thing that I've always described myself as, which is I'm a world weary optimist. I'm not a wide eyed optimist. Like, oh my God, everything's going to be great. And like, yeah. things are going to be spectacular. I'm a world weary optimist. I am worried about the world. I, I worry about the world. Uh, you know, like, I mean, the way David and I operate, he's very detail oriented and, you know, can plan a lot of things during the day, or if we have people, friends over for dinner, what we're going to do and all those things. And it's all great and wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, and I always, and he'll always say to me, what do you think about, you know, should we put the glasses on this side or this, yeah. that there? And I'm always like, well, Iran could get the bomb. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm worried about these other, these other world things, which is everything that we're sort of talking about here. So I'm not, I'm not an optimist in, in some like imaginary way of being an optimist. And I'm not a pessimist because, yeah. You know, I don't think you could do what we do yeah. and be a pessimist because you'd kill yourself. Right. I mean, you really would. Because every day you'd wake up, you'd go, oh man, more bad stuff. Right. You'd just be talking about it negatively and it would kill you. Yeah. I think that if, I mean, I said it before, but if enough of us just try to deal with this stuff honestly and just try to slow down that wheel a little bit, yeah. And again, just be a little bit better than all the people who would love to destroy us. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the winning ticket. Yeah. That's the winning ticket. That's not be a Republican or be yeah. a Democrat. That's just like be a human in a be a functioning human right. in a messed up time. That's right. Be someone that just thinks about your life and the world you want to live in in somewhat of a serious way. It doesn't mean you're perfect, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But like if you can do that. It's sort of the orgasm box that you were talking about before. You know what I mean? Like if you can get your comes back. if you can get your stuff in order, yeah. Then maybe, well, yeah. Forget the orgasm box. I'll be I'll be serious for a moment. Yeah. Why did Jordan Peterson want people to clean their room? The idea yeah. was don't clean the world first. And I think that's right. what all the all the social justice warriors and these purple haired yeah. whack jobs that are screaming all day long. And it's like, oh, your life is so obviously out of control. And I have sympathy for that. And I've had times in my life where obviously that was we've all had that, right? We've all been through those times. What did Jordan say to people? He said, if you clean your room first, yeah. take, take care of whatever your internal struggles are which again are on, ongoing for all of us. And we all have times where it's like really good for a while and then you might screw up and then you backtrack or something like that. But if you do that first, you might be able to set the yeah. world right. But That's everyone right. else is focused on setting the world right. All these people who can't tie their shoes are telling you yeah. what economic policy should be. And I'm more interested in, in helping people I like, get some understanding of the world so that maybe we can all do this together. That's right. So take care of yourself, get yourself in order. Then you can pick up your bucket and your mop and clean up and the get rest that of the world. bucket, the pussy bucket, man. <laughs> I, I'm gonna. 
is nobody marketing the pussy bucket? That, that, well, that's what, right now that we have concluded, you can go run and at least make a buck on the I'm going to listen culture. to this song. This, you got to go. We'll play it. We'll play it after we cut the cameras. Yeah. Dave Rubin, thank Goals. you for joining us on the Rubin Report here. Thank I you am, for guest hosting the Rubin Report. I am so pleased. It was a great honor to come back and ruin Dave's day. I am Michael Knowles. Tune in next time for the brand new graphics, the brand new sound, the brand new Dave Rubin on the Rubin Report. And now I'm retiring. <laughs> If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.